All right, we are live from Occupy City Hall. My name is Leslie. My name is Kay. This is Kay, Leslie and Kay, members of the May 30th Alliance. I'm going to, uh, we, we, I, I say this a lot, but we are working on getting uh, some secondary mics. Uh, you got to bear with us. It's a, a lot going on right now. Uh, <clears throat> but I want to start this uh, live from Occupy City Hall uh, by saying what we say in multiple of the lives that we begin. Uh, we want to, we came out to the occupation at City Hall in Rockford, Illinois on October 3rd after on October 2nd, 2020, Tyrus Jones was shot by a Rockford Police Department officer while he was running away. We continued to stay out here after that officer was found to be justified in his attempted lynching of Tyrus Jones. Uh, that officer was found to be justified in that attempted lynching at the end of November. And by Janu and on January 5th, 2021, that officer participated in the violent assault of Denzel Duvant, who was beat while he was handcuffed by multiple officers at the Rafa Police Department. Uh, there was no accountability uh, for that assault that took place. And the officers who assaulted Denzel Duvant returned back to work. Uh, there was not even a Winnebago Boone Integrity Task Force investigation into it. And so we continued the occupation through all of those things. And then on April 10th, 2021, Faustin Guaytigo was murdered while inside of his home by the Winnebago County Sheriff deputies, namely Winnebago County Sheriff Deputy Joseph Brulard. Uh, we continue to stay here through that. 24 hours later, not even 24 hours later, Jose Gonzalez Jr. was shot by the Rockford Police Department while he was running away. Jose Gonzalez Jr. is a 19-year-old uh, young man. He was shot while running away by the Rockford Police Department. And so we stayed here through those things. The occupation continued through that. Uh, I don't have the exact date. As a matter of fact, instead of saying I don't have the exact date, what I'm going to do is find the date for when Raymond Jackson... Uh, died in Rockford, Illinois. Again, we live in a city which uh, which has had uh, multiple, okay, on April 26, April 26, 2021, Raymond Jackson died uh, while the, when the Rockford police, the Rockford police scope team, the scope team is also involved, was involved uh, in the assault of Denzel Duvant. It should be noted that the scope, uh, Den, uh, Dominic McNeese is a member of the scope team. So the scope team was, a member of the scope team was part of the attempted lynching of Tyrus Jones on October 2nd, 2020. Dominic McNeese is a member of the scope team and the scope team was involved in the assault of Denzel Duvant on January 5th, 2021. And then here we have April 26, 2021. Uh, the scope team was involved in the uh, chase that led to the death of Raymond Jackson. And far too often in this city, uh, uh, innocent bystanders have died because the police departments and the law enforcement in this city choose to turn our streets into the Fast 9 movie instead of waiting to apprehend a suspect uh, later on. They get tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars of resources, and instead of uh, apprehending suspects when it will keep everybody in the vicinity and in the area safe, they choose to engage on these uh, Paul Walker, Vin Diesel-like uh, high-speed chases, putting at risk everybody in the surrounding area. So we want to say justice for Raymond Jack and justice for Denzel Duvon, justice for Jose Gonzalez Jr., justice for Tyrus Jones, justice for Faustin Guaytigo. And we say, uh, we mention each one of those events uh, prior to speaking about uh, the, the topic at hand for this live from Occupy City Hall uh, because we want people to understand the macro aggressions of police terrorism, mass incarceration, and racial injustice. And if you don't have empathy for Tyrus Jones, maybe you will have empathy for Denzel Duvon. Maybe you will have empathy for Jose Gonzalez Jr. Maybe you will have empathy for Fausto Guaytigo or Raymond Jackson. And at the point in which an individual can tap into their empathy for one specific uh, macro aggression, that is when we extrapolate it out and make them to uh, uh, force them to understand how each one of these issues directly and indirectly affect all of us in the community, all of us in the city, all of us in this nation. Uh, so again, we say justice for Jose Gonzalez Jr., justice for Fausto Guaytigo, justice for Tyrus Jones, justice for Raymond. Jackson uh, I think I, and I, I double justice for Fausto Guaytigo I, I think I, I missed somebody's name there uh, okay so uh, uh, Kay I'll let Kay do a, a small introduction here and then after that uh, this uh, this live is titled uh, live from Occupy City Hall RPS School District uh, versus People Who Cares uh, because we are going to do a deep dive into the RPS School District 
uh, Rockford Board of Education School District versus the People Who Cares lawsuit. And we're going to speak about how some of the things mentioned in this lawsuit have implications uh, on the community today and have long lasting effects on the community today and how uh, miseducation has consistently been a tool used to feed mass incarceration, uh, police terrorism and racial injustice. So, uh, Kay, go ahead and, uh, and talk to him, give a little introduction. Again, I go by K. Okay. Um, yeah. Been with the op occupation since day one. Yep. Um, got involved personally on a, on a personal note. When people said, "Well, what, what, what drove you, or what made you get involved?" It was watching the initial video from May 30th of children with their hands up in the air, as well as women. Anyone can go back and watch the initial video. And it was at night. It was early evening, or I'd say early evening around 5.30 or 6 o'clock, I believe, in that area. And they were standing there, and they said, what do they want us to do? And you could hear people in the video, the audio, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know what they want us to do. And they had their hands up in the air. I mean, that's a universal symbol of, I am not trying to fight you. I do not pose a threat to you. And to see the, the maliciousness of them being pepper sprayed, that's what made me get involved. Because it wasn't a matter of... of it wasn't a matter of interpretation or my f opinion or my feelings. I was watching people with their hands in the air that posed zero threat to the officers on the scene, and they were pepper sprayed. And, the, and again, the insult to injury, they were women and children. And that's what made me personally get involved, and I've been involved ever since, because I'm an advocate for the helpless, uh, the voiceless. I'm an advocate for women and children as well. I'm an advocate for this cause, and I'm an advocate against injustice. So if anyone that wants to wonder about my motivation to be involved, that's it. I stand for justice. That's, that's my motivation. That's what drives me. That's what drives me every day of my life to do even when I'm not on camera. What I do in my everyday life is I am driven to, uh, to stand for, for justice. That's, that's my focus. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, uh, with that, with that introduction uh, out the way, with both of us uh, letting you know uh, who we are and what we're here for, uh, let's dive into the main topic at hand for this live from Occupy City Hall, and that is the People Who Care versus Rockford Board of Education School District Number Two Hundred Five. Uh, this is a lawsuit which was decided in April eighteenth, two thousand and one. Uh, but it still has implications on to the society and the community we live in in April 20, excuse me, April, in June 22nd of 2021. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, read through the uh, read through the decision. We're going to read through some news reports surrounding it. We're going to read through some of the case law, uh, the case text itself, and we're just going to have a, a deep dive and a, a general dialogue uh, about the the issues presented in here. So let me start off reading this. All right. And again, this is uh, the people who care versus Rockford Board of Education lawsuit. For anybody who may not have. I'm sure that is uh, some people who may not have heard of the heard of this. This is something that was I learned about just uh, 13 months ago. And so we just again, we don't we're not experts on any on any of this where we've read and, and have tried to inform ourselves on uh, this issue. And so if anybody has any things to anything to add or have any uh, context. Uh, which will be uh, useful or they believe will be helpful as we're having this dialogue and reading through these things, please feel free to throw them in the comments. And if you're watching this, share this video, share this video, share this video. Uh, okay. United States Court of Appeals, Seventh Circuit. People who care, plaintiffs, appellates, ver appellate versus Rockford Board of Education, school district number 205, defendant appellate. Decided April 18th, 2001. Before Bauer, Posner, and Kane, circuit judges, Jonathan A. Rothstein, Gessler, Hughes, and Sokol, Chicago, Illinois, for plaintiffs, appellates, Larry and Chasty Horde, and Jonathan Hughes. Jonathan A. Rothstein, Gessler, Hughes, and Sokol, Chicago, Illinois. Amy E. Shaper, Laura Bissell, I think these are his names. Okay, these, okay. I'm going to read through it still. Uh, Laura Bissell and Brooke, Rockford, Illinois. For Plaintiff Appelli, Stephanie Barfield, Robert C. Howard. Argued Futterman and Howard, Chicago, Illinois. 
Vanita Harvey, Futterman and Howard, Rockford, Illinois, Janet L. Pulliam, Pulliam and Wright, Little Rock, Arkansas, Eugene Eubanks, Dr. Kansas City, Missouri, for Planet for Pellet, People Who Care, Thomas J. Lester, Henshaw and, Cur and Culber Culbertson, Rockford, Illinois, Michael Kirk, Argued, Cooper Carvin and Ross Rosenthal, Washington, D.C., for Defendant Appellate Rockford Board of Education, School District Number 205. Uh, so those are just the different lawyers and the law firms and the people who argued the case. Uh, so here we go. <clears throat> Twelve years ago, the plaintiffs filed this lawsuit against the Board of Education of Rockford, Illinois, charging that the board had intentionally discriminated against black and Hispanic students. Though nominally a new suit, it was actually a continuation of a school desegregation litigation that had started long before and had resulted in the entry of a remedial decree as early as 1973. See Quality Education for All Children, Inc. versus School, Bo school Board 362. Uh, realistically, we are dealing with a lawsuit that is almost 30 years old. Okay, so this is in 2001. So they're saying that this lawsuit in, real, in reality is 30 years old. So that goes back to uh, 1971 in which this lawsuit is not only claiming, but this lawsuit, it should be noted, this lawsuit uh, was won uh, by the people who care suing uh, the uh, Board of Education. Uh, so 19, since 1971, they claim that miseducation, let's, look, let's get their exact words, uh, charged that the board had intentionally discriminated against black and Hispanic students. Uh, since 1971, they were charging that the Rockford uh, Board of Education and Rockford Public Schools had been uh, discriminating against black and Hispanic students. And so uh, I want to stop right there and let's, uh, let us sort of dive in onto exactly what that means. Uh, and uh, so, Kay, what when you hear that since 19, this is in 2001, and when you hear that since 1973, uh, the Board of Education of Rockford, Illinois, was charged and then found guilty with uh, discriminating uh, and desegregating uh, against black and Hispanic students, what's some of the first thoughts that you have from that? My very first thought is, hold on, let me go For, I, I believe I said it at least once in every live, that Rockford, Illinois is 40 to 60 years behind other major cities of its size in America namely the North. So North and South really don't have a bearing on progressiveness. Uh, this basically is, is proof positive because I know people like to split hairs and, and play semantics and talk about feelings. Feelings aren't facts. Feelings aren't necessarily facts. So I'm not talking about how I feel or what I think. We're discussing facts here. And the fact of the matter is, as Leslie just stated, since the 70s, this was an issue in Rockford. Yes. And then it came to a head by 2021, uh, 2000. uh, by 2001, 2002, in that area, it came to a head, and the the uh, We Care group actually won the suit against the education system in Rockford, which was blatantly being segregated. So yeah. when people want to just throw out there, well, it, it's just so long ago. That's that's one of the biggest references to deflect when yeah. it comes to racism, bigotry, hatred, prejudice. Well, it's so long ago. 2002, 2001, wasn't that long ago. And the people you have to, in, uh, on top of what Kay is saying is, uh, I think we have to also, hey, let me, I think we have to also take into consideration, and I think this is one of the things that doesn't happen a lot when people think about uh, the dates that some of these, uh, some of these significant dates in America when, it tie, when it's tied into racism and bigotry and white, white nationalism and things of that nature. I think a lot of time people hear the date and they think that, well, this happened then. And so even besides the fact whether it was a long time ago, they think that it's over with. Right. Uh, and in reality, one of the things that's important, especially for something like this, is to think that if from 1970 to 2001 uh, there is proof uh, and evidence enough for a, ju uh, uh, 
for them to be found guilty of it in a court or for them to, to take some type of plea of it in a court, if it's enough evidence to prove that those things happened for 30 years, think about the different generations of people who that have adversely affected and then think about how their lives have been altered. So if from 1970, uh, from, if from 1973 to 2001 or from 1970 to 2000 for those 30 years, uh, how many black and Hispanic families uh, were had their children miseducated and then those children didn't have then the proper uh, the proper opportunities uh, for uh, higher education or for collegiate education which limited the opportunities that they had for uh, employment that would uh, help them to rise maybe out of whichever uh, living circumstances their family members had and then think about how that uh, that uh, miseducation and discrimination through a lifetime then affects them as they have children and they raise their children. And then never mind the fact that if it's a 30 year span that the children that they're raising are now being fed back into that same discriminatory right. system. Uh, and so those are the, when I hear these dates, I think about how uh, my, and my, I have fam my family, my uncles, my mother went to school here. Uh, my cousins, older cousins, uh, uncle, aunt, uncles and aunts went to school here, like I was saying. Excuse me. Uh, I repeated uncles and aunts twice. But I say that to say that I think about how uh, that miseducation uh, adversely may have adversely affected them and then how that adversely affected their children and then their or their grandchildren, you know. And, and, we, and again, I think one of the things we should also point out, and I'm going to pass it back over to you before we start reading again. One of the things that we should also point out is that uh, people say to this day that right now, uh, if they went and sued the school district again, that they would win. So it is not as if, as we're remember, as we're reading through these things, this is not as if the city has uh, has been absolved of these issues, and this city has truly uh, and adequately uh, addressed these issues. Uh, they're just not in the process of being sued for these issues right now. Uh, and so, uh, what? Go ahead. Did you have something I that you wanted to add? Hold that. on one I second. Just had a conversation with someone about their children going to. They had one child going to one school, one child going to another school. And they literally said, my one child going to this one particular school, straight A student, but it's an inner city school. So on paper, this child looks like a genius. Now this is not to slight the parent, slight the child. This is their story. Yes. They said, I was, a, I was proud of my child, the older one, straight A student. The younger child was struggling and almost sees and, and threatening to, you know, D's and failing classes, but struggling. Meanwhile, they were in more of a suburban atmosphere. So they, the, the, the sleight of hand is under education of inner city school districts. It's, it's an under education. Whereas a fourth grade, fourth grader may actually be reading at, the, the curriculum may actually be like a third grade or second grade level, just at, in, in context. Or in many cases, and you can research this and look this up. Again, I'm not talking about feelings, not telling you what I think. You can Google and s and just, the, just the disparagement between certain inner city students, even with scholarships, where when they get to college, they're taking classes that they thought they were done with and they were ready to go, you know, their first, first year in college to start college classes. They were doing like 12th grade work mixed in with their college classes because of the, the inadequacy of the education that they received in their inner city school. They literally graduated, some of them got scholarships. There's testimonials all easily accessible online where you'll find high school graduates, excellent, excellent grades on paper, but when they got to college, they were not able to, to perform at an entry level right out of high school into college. Meanwhile, speaking about myself personally, I grew up between city and a very rural atmosphere. Uh, it, to put context to that, my, my stepdad was actually, he worked for Kodak and uh, Xerox. He worked for both companies. He was a computer programmer uh, and he did other aspects in, the, in, the, in this field. Now, as an African-American man growing up, that was rare. I remember him coding at home on a computer. Didn't, it, didn't know what he was doing, but he would explain, I'm coding, I have to look into this code. He did that. He was also an instructor. So I have a very different perspective when people talk about education. I know what an undereducating school looks like when I was in the inner city. And I know what it looked like when we moved to the, to, to the suburbs and eventually into a rural setting. The education was completely different. It was at a higher caliber. 
the just the process, the atmosphere was completely different. When I graduated high school, it was mandatory for every junior, every junior, to apply to three colleges. And it wasn't like a pressure thing and everybody was nervous and hyperventilating. They said apply as a junior during your senior year. You'll be accepted to at least one school or at least it'll, it'll get the ball rolling for you to think about college. I'm saying this because I want people that have grown up in Rockford to see the relevance of how did this impact your life on a personal level by getting an education in Rockford. Right. Right. This, what, what, what Lizzie's speaking about, or what we're speaking about collectively here tonight, is, is an education gap. It's an education disparity that translates to an economic disparity. Because you, anytime you talk education, education, and the education gap, it translates to an economic gap. Right. And even as Leslie said, I'll just I'll, I'll pass the mic back. Even when he said in regards to now, and this is why I, I made this statement about myself first, this person's situation was the older child that was basically a straight-A student could not help the younger child with their homework. Right. Now, like I said, this is not my story. This is a story someone shared with me about the education system in Rockford, the, in, in the, the, the setting of downtown or, you know, in, in, the, in the district of where most of the inner city, quote unquote, inner city schools are. And that's, that's when the parents said, that's when my eyes were opened to the education disparity between my two children because they went to two different districts, two different schools. Right. And this is now. This is not in reference to this lawsuit of uh, yeah, uh, 2001. This is now, as in right now today, 2020, 2021. This is now currently in Rockford. All right, and then we're going to pick back up where we left off at here. So in 1994, the district judge found by inference from disparities in educational and, and educational achievement between white and minority students and from the school board's failure to take effective measures to prevent individual public schools from becoming all white or all minority that the board had indeed engaged in intentional racial discrimination. I'm going to repeat that sentence one more time. In 1994, the district judge found, by inference from disparities in educational achievement between white and minority students and from the school board's failure to take effective measures to prevent individual public schools from becoming all white or all minority, that the board had indeed engaged in intentional racial discrimination. The board did not appeal, and so the litigation moved into the remedial stage, presided over by a magistrate judge with the consent of the parties. A formidably complex and ambitious remedial decree was entered in 1996, provoking appeals that led us the following year to vacate many of its provisions, such as racial quotas for cheerleaders, super seniority for minority teachers, unrealistic goals for closing the white minority gap in test scores, and limits on the number of minority students who could enroll in remedial classes. We pointedly warned against, quote, ambitious schemes of social engineering, end quote, and stated that children, quote, should not be made subjects of utopian projects, end quote. Apart from misdescribing our opinion as having merely, quote, modified certain provisions of the decree, the magistrate judge managed to avoid any reference to that opinion in his latest 57-page opinion here under review. Okay, and so, uh, again, we want to go through, and uh, it's a, a, lot, a lot being said, and uh, in these paragraphs and a lot being said in, in all of the things that we're about to read now. So we want to take our time to dissect this. So let's go through this first sentence here where it says, in 1994, the district judge found by inference from disparities in educational achievement between white and minority students and from the school board's failure to take effective measures to prevent individual public schools from becoming all white or all minority, that the board had indeed engaged in intentional racial discrimination. Okay, and so... <clears throat> That gets us back to the place where we think about the families and the generations, the actual people that these things had effects on. And so uh, in 1994, uh, they were speaking about how actions done up to that point had allowed for uh, schools to become all white or all minority. And again, we should have we have to rem remember that uh, Brown versus the Board of Education was 1954. 
Uh, and we are speaking about in that in 1954, uh, it was found that the segregating or segregation of schools was uh, unconstitutional, that schools were not fair but equal. Uh, and so it was decreed that schools uh, that the school system needed to be integrated. And uh, ten, it was 10 years later. Uh, uh, Dr. King was marching to integrate schools in Alabama still. Uh, SCLC and SNCC were uh, demonstrating and CORE was demonstrating to integrate uh, schools still. Uh, presidents were uh, uh, having to uh, declare, have send the National Guard out just for black children to go to certain schools. And so when you hear, when you realize that those are the, the that those are the kind of things that were going on in the 60s uh, and that the if you know history will tell you that that was a southern thing that happened in the 50s and the 60s and then it was taken care of uh, but here we have it in Rockford Illinois in the north uh, not in the 60s but in the uh, 70s 80s and 90s that uh, school boards were actively uh, uh, either allowing or making uh, schools and districts be all white or all minority and we know from history that if a school is all one school is all white and another school is all minority or majority white and other ones majority minority that the one that is majority white is getting better resources is getting uh, better teachers uh, and is getting better education and so we have to remind ourselves that this is now not just the children of the uh, not just the uh, people in the 70s who then had children who now they are uh, behind and they don't have the same opportunities uh, given to them but now people in the 80s are behind and don't have the same opportunities granted to them people in the 90s are behind and don't have the same opportunities granted to them and I'm going to pass it back here to Kay in a second so he can uh, chime in on this this first sentence right here. And then we'll dive back into some more of the things that's on here. Uh, but so, again, we have to think about uh, when people say, well, why is it so much, uh, quote unquote, black on black violence or inner community violence? Well, one of the things that has happened is that they have been uh, 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 sy systematically and systemically uh, miseducated for uh, decades. Uh, uh, for hundred, uh, really hundreds of years, but we're speaking on a uh, decade amount of time uh, because they have been uh, systematically and systemically denied opportunities, uh, whether that be uh, in uh, higher education or uh, whether that be in employment. Uh, and again, when uh, it's, statistics will tell you that when uh, dropping out of high school, you're more likely to end up in jail or end up in the uh, prison industrial complex in, the, in, the, in mass incarceration, uh, if not uh going on to if not having uh, employment you know it's, there's a multiple things that lead to uh, statistically you being more likely to end up in the mass incarceration uh, and, and into the prison industrial complex and one of the main things is miseducation of communities uh, and th again that is also what happens is when a high school is in a community or middle school is in a community or schools are in a community and those schools are miseducated it leads to that whole community in the area being miseducated because everybody goes to that same school there and and that leads to, through time, uh, that area not having the same resources being invested into it that are being invested into other areas. And that's why you end up with uh, communities uh, that uh, regularly have higher uh, and more likely uh, uh, cases and incidents of crime. Uh, and how you have uh, families who end up uh, generationally uh, in, in the, uh, ushered into the prison industrial complex. And so uh, for me, when I see that they are saying here in 1994 in Rockford, Illinois, that there were schools that were majority white, schools that were majority black. It lets me know, and that the school that the school board was uh, basically allowing for these things to happen, not stopping these things from happening. It reminds you of how deeply rooted the racism is. A lot of the people who are part of the school board still alive right now. Uh, these people uh, destroyed people's lives systematically and systemically destroyed people's lives. Uh, and so, those are the things that uh, I think of when I hear that. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna move this over and pass it over to Kay. Let Kay have some thoughts. Just for, for context again, white supremacy, the white, white supremacist ideology was not constructed to uplift in any manner white people. White supremacy was developed and coordinated to suppress and tear down and hold down people of color. Whites are only 16% of the global population I'm sure at the time of its inception, which was well after 1492, but uh, at, the, at the form of its inception, well, actually, it, was, it, it does predate 1492, but uh, just dealing with African, uh, and I, I digress, but I, I'm using this as context. The creation of white supremacy was in direct response to Northern Africans or Moors 
in Spain and all throughout Western Europe. I'll stress that again. All throughout Western Europe. They brought education. They brought uh, government. They brought st structure. 95% of all of Europe was illiterate until the Northern Africans began entering into Western Europe and educating them. But the response came out of that. When you look at education, what do you think? You think power. You think ability. You think leverage. So the response, when you look at that time in history, was the development of white supremacy. There's no scientific, moral, or ethical reason to say someone is superior to another. But I'm using that because it does tie into this specifically. White supremacy, the ideology of it is one person based on their genetic makeup saying that they are supreme or superior to everyone else on the planet. Not just some people. Everyone else. Everyone else. And to put yourself in a supremacy mindset or a supremacy atmosphere, you are saying in the same breath, I am equal to no man. It's, it's, it's no different than saying, I am, I am a God man. I am a God man on earth. There was no one that can touch me. There's no one equal. I'm using that as a reference. Because of white supremacy, that we have the result of this education system where it was, de it, it was the suppressing of the black community in Rockford that was deemed okay. They, they voted on this, and they, they knew the repercussions. It wasn't as if they didn't know what it was going to lead to. They knew the intent of their, of their voting, and they knew the outcome of what it would be. It would, it would be devastating, but they voted on it. Now, I'm going to use this as a reference. I'm going to play it off my uh, phone. It's, it's highlighted, and I'm just going to speak to text so you can hear what it was like when they voted on this. Saturday morning meeting in February 1989. Recall it is a dark time for the city. School board member Mike Williams remembers that day like okay. he remembers many of the days okay. surrounding the announcement of the board's plan to close right. 10 schools. I'll read it. It says, those who attended the Saturday morning meeting in February 1989 recall it, it as a dark time for the city. This is talking about Rockford. This is not Baton Rouge. This is not deep south Mississippi. This is Rockford, Illinois. School board member Mike Williams remembers that day like, it, like he remembers many of the days surrounding the announcement of the board's plan to close 10 schools, including the naturally integrated West High School and create a mega elementary school for 1,200 displaced students. People began, uh, people begged People, and this is his, his, his statement, his quote. People begged the board to not implement the plan, Williams said. No one got up and said, this is a great plan. All I remember was people getting up and crying and screaming. It fell on deaf ears except for one board member. That was me. Williams voted against the plan and warned his fellow uh, board members of the potential for a lawsuit after voting to pass the board after voting to pass what the board dubbed the together toward a brighter tomorrow plan board members celebrated with cake and again you should uh let's so that way we get everybody so that way we don't have people confused say what what year is this and this the, was in context this was was a year 1989. Okay. This was in 1989. Okay, so that's... And they voted on it. Okay, so again, that was uh, 1989. He's speaking about the uh, that vote. But we want to... And again, uh, we're going through the uh, People Who Cares uh, lawsuit. People Who Cares versus the RPS School District 205 lawsuit. Uh, we're just trying to, uh, again, extrapolate how... Uh, the miseducation of uh, black and Hispanic students uh, has, and the purposeful miseducation, the purposeful discrimination against black and Hispanic students uh, has led to uh, the increase in police terrorism, mass incarceration, and racial injustice uh, being per per perpetuated uh, onto uh, community members. Uh, the fact that these, that generations of black and Hispanic uh, 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 communities uh, were uh, 
miseducated and were uh, discriminated against is the reason in which now some of those communities have uh, high rates of crime, have uh, high uh, turnaround rates when it comes to people coming in and out of jail. And so one of the, here you go. Here. I, just, I just want to add to that. I just want to add to that, Leslie, because this, this this next paragraph after it said well, let's, let's let's get let's get through this one and then yeah we'll, we'll get through this, this one this yeah because we got this pulled off too yeah so that way we don't get people uh keep the the, lo the order of this and then we'll hop into that and go this run through the order of that the personal like blow by blow of the actual vote yeah I, I let's you're talking about the yeah the and then we and we'll jump to that so that way we keep people in the same okay. in the same in the same time in the same space because, uh, again, we're, we're here where uh, this is just going through the entirety of the specifics of it. And then we can go to some of the stories as well, too. So that way we can keep everybody on the on the same uh, wavelength here. And so what we were the, the, that what we were doing is just trying to dissect the uh, most recent paragraph that we read. Uh, and so uh, let's we'll uh, let's we'll, we'll move into the, the this next paragraph here. Uh, and again, we didn't really get to dive into each one of those sentences too heavily. I want to make sure we're, we're, we're keeping it flowing. Uh, but I, I encourage people to uh, look these things up at their selves. We will put the links for some of these things onto the uh, Facebook page also. So here, let's let's move along to the next uh, portion here. <clears throat> Later, we remarked, quote, the failure of the parties. And it seems the magistrate judge and the special master who is assisting him to heed the admoni admonition of the Supreme Court, see Missouri versus Jenkins, Board of Education versus Dow, which we have repeated United States versus Board of School Commissioners to bend every effort to winding up school litigation and returning the operation of the schools to the local school authorities. Uh, and, and so, again, I want to try to add some more context to some of these things. Uh, what has happened is because of this lawsuit, the power of the school or the Board of Education, instead of it being in the hands of the local school authorities, uh, is being turned over to the uh, uh, federal uh, school authorities. And so that's sort of in, uh, similar to we were spoke on this when you're we talking about Juneteenth. Uh, but Juneteenth was an event that was uh, to that Juneteenth was highlighting. Uh, in Galveston, the local government had, because of the corruptness, uh, had to have the federal government come in and usurp their power because of the discrimination that they were and the oppression that they were uh, perpetuating onto the black members of their community by continuing to keep them in enslavement two years after the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed. And so uh, here in Rockford, Illinois, uh, there was a similar event as that. The, the local gov school board government, the local school board authorities had to have the federal uh, authorities come in and take control. So let's continue reading here. And the following year, in still another opinion, we warned of the quote, looming inter, inter, interminability of this litigation, end quote, and noting the school board's representation that full compliance with the decree was achievable by 2002, we suggested that the board submit to the magistrate judge a plan for winding up the litigation. The board then moved the magistrate judge to dissolve the decree effective June 30, 2002, the end of the 2001 school year. The board argued that it had achieved full compliance with the decree's objectives and that the illegal conduct on which the litigation was based, uh, parenthesis, uh, oh, excuse me, one more, I misread that sentence. Let me try that again. The board argued that it had achieved full compliance with the decree's objectives and that the remaining inequalities in educational achievement between white and minority students cannot be attributed to the illegal conduct on which the litigation was based. Uh, parentheses. Why the board asks for a deferred rather than immediate dissolution is unclear, but we are not disposed to give it more relief than it asks for. The magistrate judge agreed to relax some of the provisions of the decree but ruled that the others must continue for at least another six, parentheses now five, years. The plaintiffs would like the decree to continue in an effect for at least 11 more years. We stress, quote, at least, end quote. Nothing in the logic of either the magistrate judge's opinion or the plaintiff's brief on, brief on appeal suggests any natural terminus to the decree. Okay, and so again, one of the things that we want to do is try to uh, dissect some of these things. I know... Uh, uh, the litigate law law terminology and law jargon can be uh, 
a little bit of complicated to get through. And so I'm definitely not, you know, we're not saying that we're experts in it, but because we know some of the gist of what is going on from uh, news stories and uh, other pieces that have been written, uh, what is happening is what happened is uh, because the local government did lose this lawsuit and the federal government or excuse me, the local the local school board lost this lawsuit. The federal uh, government, federal uh, school authorities came in uh, and, and took control uh, and forced specific things to happen. Uh, so that way there could be some type of uh, uh uh, adjustment to this uh, uh, discrimination that was going on against black and Hispanic students. And what is happening is as time is passing through uh, 1990, through 1980s, through the 90s, uh, the school board here is asking to get power uh, uh, returned back to them and for have the power relinquished from the federal government uh, so that the local, excuse me, from the federal government. Uh, from federal powers and have the uh, power uh, given back to the local school authorities so they can make decisions again. And they're saying that they have done everything that they possibly can uh, to even up the gap between white and minority students. Uh, it should be noted that at, in saying that this is in 2002 that they are saying that it should be noted that they are saying that the gap is not even. And so they are saying that the the. Uh, there is still a gap between the white and the minority students as far as education. They're just saying that now it cannot be attributed to the illegal conduct on which the lawsuit uh, uh, began on. But even within that, uh, this is them uh, giving a lot of these things is uh, this uh, a reiteration of the fact that they agree uh, or that they have conceded that there was a legal activity that was going on uh, surrounding the education of black uh, and minority students, black and brown students. And so with the understanding that in 2002, uh, this board, uh, the school board here in Rockford had uh, had basically waved the white flag and admitted that they uh, uh, used the legal means to miseducate black and brown students. That lets you understand the type of city that we are dealing with. That lets you understand how deep the roots of racism truly is in this city. Uh, and, and again, when we start talking about things such as reparations, when we start uh, talking about uh, uh, when we start talking about and speaking about those things, uh, it should be put into the context of the fact that there are so many uh, generations of, uh, of people of color who have not had a fair shake uh, in this country uh, because of how often situations like this happen. There are so many people who live in Rockford right now who have no idea about these things, who have no, uh, uh, put no consideration to these things. Uh, and so that is why we have uh, taken a, uh, upon us to take in the mantle to try to uh, force that conversation, to try to force that dialogue uh, and to try to explain to people really how vastly deep racism truthfully is it's not just as simple as uh calling somebody a racial slur or a racial epithet or not wanting your daughter to marry a black person or uh, your son to marry a black person or uh, not wanting to uh, uh sit next to a, back, a black person uh, at a restaurant uh it, we're speaking about syst systematic systemic racism institutional racism which is so much more devastating than individual racism uh, a lot of times individual racism is a lot more uh uh uh, harder to view or it's a lot harder to digest, uh, but it does not have the same damage uh, as systematic and systemic racism. Uh, instead of instead of, you know, lynching a man, they have found a way to uh, destroy a man's family uh, by miseducating him, by miseducating his children, by not allowing them to have the same opportunities. And so for me, as I go through again and read through these things and we see the different years and we see the different uh, 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 terminology used, uh, it just lets us know again that we do. I'd say this to people all the time. Rockford is one of the most racist cities in this nation. Right? Winnebago County is one of the most racist counties in this nation. And it's not just an opinion. It is has been documented on facts. There has been litigation uh, that has proven these things. Uh, and so, again, this is right now we are going through the RPS uh, School District 205 versus the People Who Cares lawsuit. And we're speaking about the. Uh, implications that those things have uh, on the community and how those things have uh, fed into police terrorism, mass incarceration and racial injustice. Uh, and so as I go through and read those things, again, we want to uh, we're just trying to extrapolate how these things directly uh, relate to where we are at here today. Uh, those are some of the thoughts that I have in reading those things, uh, reading about them, asking for power back, reading about how the power had to be stripped from them, reading about the extent it had to be stripped for, uh, reading about 2002. I went to high, I graduated high school in 2009.
2009, I went to school in this time. I remember being able to, uh, you, it was a time where they asked you what school you wanted to go to. And at the time, I didn't know the reason that I was being asked what school I wanted to go to was because the school, the school system in the city I was in was so racist that they had to have the power taken away from them. And it had to be uh, in uh, had to be diverted to the federal government and the federal government was the one who was saying that we were going to be able to pick which school we went to. Uh, but here as it stands now, a generation later after after I was allowed to, uh, after I was told that I could pick the school I was from to defeat racism. Uh, my son right now, if he was to uh, go to school, he wouldn't be able to pick the school that he was in. Uh, he would have to go to the school uh, in which was in his district, which is the exact same activity of racism uh, that they were sued for, you know? And so that just lets us know that these issues have not truly been solved. These issues have not truly been addressed. What up, what up, what up, what up? Uh, and again, we're uh, we're speaking about the RPS school district uh, versus the people who cares, the RPS 205 school district versus the Board of Education versus the people who cares lawsuit and how these issues uh, and how the things presented in here, uh, the implications that they have on the community that we are in right now. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to add on uh, that paragraph where they talked about taking the power from the federal government, where they talk about uh, trying to get the power back and things of that nature? It speaks volumes to how a community on the surface can act, and I, I do stress that word, and that is the appropriate word, can act like it has sympathy, compassion, and uh, love for all citizens. And this is a, a proof positive example of how Rockford blatantly treated its, uh, its black uh, population and Latino population, just completely slighted them completely attempted in every means possible to suppress them or hold them down. That's why I made the whole reference about white supremacy. It's about holding people down. And basically that's what they did. They held them back by undereducating them and keeping them pocketed together and undereducated. Yeah, and, and again, this is we're just speaking about how all of these issues uh, directly relate to uh, the city of Rockford and how uh, 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 it is no coincidence that uh, police terrorism, mass incarceration and racial injustice are such issues in this city. Uh, it's not something that uh, occurred by happenstance. There were specific decisions that were made and whether again, whether people made each one of these individual decisions uh, purposefully to uh, perpetuate uh, police terrorism, mass incarceration, and racial injustice is really secondary. It's the fact that uh, these decisions were made and that these things did happen and that it did have these type of implications. Uh, and so we have to uh, address these things and speak about these things and how these things got here for us to uh, continue, for us to ever be able to solve these things or fix these things. Uh, and so we are uh, down here on the next paragraph here. Uh, okay, so we've read through the first two paragraphs, uh, excuse me, yeah, the first three paragraphs, and we are now uh, coming up to the fourth paragraph here. Uh, through the end of 1999, the taxpayers of Rockford had incurred total cost of $238 million to comply with the 1996 decree and its predecessors going, on, going back only to 1989, of which more than half have been incurred since 1996. Again, let me read through that again. Through the end of 1999, the taxpayers of Rockford had incurred total cost of $238 million to comply with the 1996 decree and its predecessors going back only to 1989, of which more than half have been incurred since 1996. And so that is how much money is having to be spent uh, because of the cost of this miseducation. So again, when we talk about uh, it being direct and indirect uh, implications to these issues, uh, we speak about those things uh, not only uh, because of the uh, uh, initial families and the initial generations who had to deal with uh, these issues, who had to deal with this discrimination, who had to deal with this racism. Uh, as a taxpayer, when a lawsuit is done unto the city and money has to be paid out for that lawsuit, uh, that money is paid out uh, by taxpayers. When uh, there's a lawsuit and somebody is shot by a police department officer or somebody dies inside the jail uh, and, and there has to be money paid out, the money is paid out from taxpayers 
taxpayers. And so, again, that is direct and indirect uh, uh, relation to these issues. And that is why it is important for us as a community uh, to uh, make sure that we are becoming educated and informed on those things. Again, uh, no, 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 no. Attorney, no, no, no. attorney's fees alone are approaching $20 million. Uh, through, the end, through the end of 1999, the taxpayers of Rockford had incurred total cost of $238 million to comply with the 1996 decree and its predecessors going back only to 1989, of which more than half have been incurred since 1996. By now, the total must be substantially greater. Attorney's fees alone are approaching $20 million. 20% of the school district property taxes paid by homeowners in Rockford go to fund the decree. As a result of the improvements enabled by this large expenditure and a policy of allowing parents to choose which Rockford Public School to send their kids to, the, the school district had by the end of 1999, in, by the end of 1999 when the school board filed its motion to dissolve the decree, succeeded in desegregating its schools. Desegregation had been defined by the magistrate judge as the condition in which the minority composition of each school would not deviate by more than 15 percentage points from the minority composition of the population of the school district. Because this is a tighter range than imposed in most school desegregation cases, the Rockford Public Schools are now less segregated than those in any previous case in which a school system was declared, quote, unitary, uh, parentheses, that is, declare sufficiently desegregated to require the dissolution of the decree and the return of the control of the public schools to the school board. The plaintiffs fear backsliding and so a wait and see period of at least 15 years after desegregation during which the decree will remain in force. And so again, this is uh, this paragraph here is just speaking more towards uh, the not just the direct, not just the direct relation that these issues have, uh, but the indirect relation that these issues have. Because uh, as it speaks about the money that is here, uh, different taxpayers who uh, may not personally have uh, uh, opted into the the discrimination of black and Hispanic students had to pay money out for it. And again, so we're in a place in which, just like when police officers uh, kill somebody or shoot somebody and then the family sues, uh, and then you are basically saying that uh, and the money is paid out and it's basically like the taxpayers are paying for these officers to commit this violence. Uh, the, uh, the taxpayers are uh, funding this state sanction violence. It's the same thing with this lawsuit here. Uh, the taxpayers ended up being the ones paying for this miseducation. Uh, the community of Rockford was paying uh, to miseducate their children. Uh, so think about this. Uh, it was it was a set of taxpayers who were paying out money because of the miseducation of these community members. And then at the same time, because of the, uh, uh, the, ever, the, the long-lasting effects of miseducation, there are people who now live in a community in which is less, value, uh, is less valuable or the, the, uh, the community's depreciation has decreased uh, because of this miseducation, because of the uh, lack of opportunity that the people who lived in this community now have. Uh, and so, again, that is uh, why we have to have dialogues about these things, why we have to have uh, uh, monologues about these things, why we have to dig deeper into these things, uh, because of the implications and the uh, uh, the the long-lasting effects that some of these things have on us uh, even now today. Uh, and so that is that is the reason that we're uh, going through and speaking about the RPS uh, people who care school district uh, versus excuse me about the people who care versus the RPS school district uh, because and again this is uh, we're speaking about children because in a, the teenagers this is the root this is the beginning of when all of these things happen uh, and so another one of the things uh, it says attorneys fees alone are approaching twenty million dollars uh, twenty million dollars uh, was paid for people to argue that we were uh, miseducating our uh, our children here. Again, $20 million of attorney fees. As a result of improvements enabled by this large for desegregation have been defined by the magistrate judge because it is a tighter range. Okay, and then again, uh, the, even after this was over with, the 15 years after the desegregation, uh, there was a wait and see period because of the fear that the government had about these things uh, uh, duplicating and happening again. Uh, okay, let's we'll go to this next paragraph because this with the the sound, this sound, this is the only mic that's gonna be good. Uh, the length of the litigation, the scale of the expenditures, and the achievement of desegregation constitute, against the background of applicable law, compelling arguments to end this litigation. 
It used to be extremely difficult to modify any kind of equitable decree. See United States versus Swift and Co. 286 U.S. 106. Uh, but as we noted recently in ordering radical modification of another institutional reform decree, one that has subjected the Chicago police to severe restrictions on its power to investigate terrorist activities, the Supreme Court has adopted a much more flexible standard for the modification of decree entered in institutional reform litigation than the swift standard of yore. Uh, the court believes the states and their subdivisions have a right to the restoration of control over the institutions of state and local governments as soon as the objectives of the federal remedial decree have been achieved. Uh, People Who Cares versus Rafa Board of Education. Uh, unlike, dec unlike decrees that bind private parties, decrees that hand over the control of important state functions such as education to federal courts, quote, are not intended to operate in, per in perpetuity. End quote. Board of Education versus Dow. Quote, the Supreme Court disfavors permanent injunctions in school cases. The administration of public schools is a state extensive function rather than a federal judicial function and so ought not to be subjected to the perpetual tutelage of the federal courts. Uh, United States versus Board of School Commissioners. And then I'm just going to keep reading through some of these things here too and then we'll uh, just dive back into some more of them later. Uh, <clears throat> The purpose of a school desegregation decree is to eliminate the consequences of segregation. When they have been eliminated, the decree has done its job and should be lifted. This simple principle which we don't understand, the, excuse me, the purpose of a school desegregation decree is to eliminate the consequences of segregation. When they have been eliminated, the decree has done its job and should be lifted. This simple principle which we don't understand the plaintiffs to be quarreling with dictates our decision. The Rafa public schools have been desegregated. No longer are there any schools that are, quote, white only or, quote, minority only, or even approximations to such schools. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been poured into the construction and renovation of schools and into programs designed to extirpate the traces of unlawful segregation. Although minority educational achievement lags behind that of whites, there is no evidence that the lag is any greater in Rockford than in any otherwise similar districts that have no historical, that have no history of racial discrimination. Uh, okay, and so again, this is just a reminder, or the 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 uh, uh, another another uh, another form of them explaining just the the devastation of uh, the desegregation and discrimination that was going on uh, in the Rockford public school systems. Uh, and even again, we need to remember that as there, as we read through here, it's saying that uh, the school system is now desegregated. As we read through here, and uh, it's speaking about how some of these things have been fixed or solved. We should remember that this was written in 2001. This was written in 2001, and since then, right now, there are multiple people who say that this same lawsuit can be uh, brought against the RPS uh, 205 school district, that they're engaging in these same things again. Again, one of the things that happened is that the power of uh, where people went to school at was taken away from uh, the, local, uh, the local school board was put into the hands of the uh, federal government, and the federal government began to allow children to pick where they wanted to go to school at in an effort to uh, defeat the, the strict segregation that had gone on here. Again, this was going on in Rockford, Illinois, not in 1940 or 1950 or 1960 or 1970, uh, but it's something that was going on in Rockford, Illinois, uh, even now. Uh, excuse me, even now. That was something that was going on in Rockford, Illinois uh, through the 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, and, and again, people say that this is something that is uh, still going on even now. Uh, all right, let's find where we at here. Uh, let the litigation scale out the expenditures in 1999. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> The length of the litigation, the scale of the expenditures, and the achievement of desegregation constitute, against the background of applicable law, compelling arguments to end this litigation. It used to be extremely difficult to modify any kind of equitable decree. See United States versus Swift and Co. But as we noted recently, oh, oh, hold on, one second, one second. I'm reading through this again. That's the same thing we just read through. My fault, my fault, y'all. Uh, the purpose of a school desegregation decree is to eliminate... The purpose of a school desegregation decree is to eliminate the consequences of segregation. When they have been eliminated, the decree has done its job and should be lifted. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, we went through, through both of those. All right, we went through both of those. My fault, y'all. My fault, y'all. My fault, y'all. We're going to have to do this one a different time again. Uh, all right. <laughs> Four years ago, almost to the day, we noted the absence of, quote, evidence that the gap in scholastic achievement between white and minority students in Rockford is any greater than the gap between white and minority students in school districts that have not been found to have discriminated against their black and Hispanic students, end quote. One might have expected the planners to take the hint and look for such evidence. If they have looked, they have found nothing. Although peppered with references to programs designed to achieve, quote, vestige elimination, end quote, the plaintiff's brief cites no evidence that there are vestiges of unlawful discrimination still to eliminate. Quote, at some point, end quote, moreover, end quote, uh, quote, the continuing and ineliminable ill- traces of an earlier violation are too slight to justify continued federal judicial control of public education. Uh, end quote. United States Board, Board of Education. And so, again, this is just uh, 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 reiterating the fact that there are still uh, uh, gaps, uh, scholastic gaps between uh, the black students, the black and Hispanic students and the white students. Uh, hold on. Well, I need him for the live. We live. We live. We live. We live. We live. I need him. I need him. I need you. I need him. I need turn it down a little bit for me. We live. Uh, okay, again, so uh, there's no point more over the continuing. Uh, the reality is that until minorities. It's, it's not going to. Uh, the reality is that. Uh, the reality is that until minority students achieve parity of educational achievement with the white students in the Rockford Public Schools, the plaintiffs will contend that the minority students are victims of the unlawful discrimination of an earlier period in Rockford's history. Uh, let me read that one more time. The reality is that until minority students achieve parity of educational achievement with the white students in the Rockford Public Schools, the plaintiffs will contend that the minority students are victims of the unlawful discrimination of an earlier period in Rockford's history. Yet it is obvious that other factors besides discrimination contribute to unequal educational attainment, such as poverty, parents' education and employment, family size, parental attitudes and behavior, prenatal, neonatal, and child health care, peer group pressures, and ethnic culture. Uh, and so, again, that's, that's, that's back to the same issue that uh, we were raising before where we have generations of this issue happening. We have, uh, you know, once you miseducate uh, one set of one family, once you miseducate one generation, uh, that is going to extrapolate to the generations that come afterwards. So even here when they say that uh, they don't believe that the racial that racial desegregation or that racial discrimination is leading to the uh, educational gap that is uh, in Rockford at this moment in time. Uh, they are still saying and they are still admitting that one of the things leading to this educational gap uh, is the parents' education and employment. And we have already went through and stated how uh, the miseducation of people in the 70s is going to lead to the lack of a- adequate opportunities out of, of employment when they become adults in the 80s, when, they, when they're when they adults in the 90s and how uh, that is no way. It's just not going to work. Uh, it, it's, it's not going to it's not going to work. We have to move the mic. It's, we we fuck. We have to do this shit over again. No. No, it's because if if we if we move this to this and this one is out, then all of the audio like that's why I gotta. If no no you you can't you can't because if I move this one I move this one over you gonna hear out you gonna hear out so that's why I gotta have this one right here like this. Uh, uh, again, uh, we're 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 going through and speaking about how the uh, RPS school district 205 how the lawsuit the implications that it has uh, on us when it comes to police terrorism mass incarceration and racial injustice uh, how. Uh, the miseducation of of the communities of Rockford, uh, how certain communities in Rockford has led to these communities uh, not having the same opportunities as other communities, uh, has led to individuals not having the same opportunities. Uh, and so, again, when they are coming when, at the end of this lawsuit, as they're trying to get this lawsuit to be wrapped up, uh, one of the things that they are using for a justification of why they are still a uh, 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 educational gap is the fact that uh, the parents' education was not adequate. 
uh, even they speak they spoke about poverty uh, if poverty again the reason uh, poverty is generational is because of the miseducation that was systematically uh, and, uh, happening uh, that's the reason that these families can't uh, rise out of poverty uh, how can the people in the 70s rise out of poverty uh, if they are being miseducated and then don't have the same opportunities at employment because of that education. Uh, and then how can their children rise out of that poverty if they then go into that same uh, school system cycle uh, and then they also are being raised in a home in which uh, uh, their, their, their home uh, is uh, th their home living is not what it could be if their family, uh, if their parents would have had more opportunities, you know. And then again, when we talk about peer group pressures, uh, that gets us into the place where everybody in this community is miseducated. Uh, so everybody in this in this community are susceptible to these same uh, peer group pressures or are susceptible to these uh, same things because of the fact that this is not something that is an isolated miseducation uh, is being ha is happening to the entire community uh, and so again when it talks about ethnic culture uh, this culture that they're trying all the things that they are trying to say are reasons for the continued uh, educational disparity they are all things that you can truthfully trace back to educational disparity uh, and so as and that is one of those that and that's one of the uh, the things that has consistently been done uh, by this by these institutions is that uh, they perpetuate the effects they perpetuate the effects they try to get you to concentrate on the effects and in the midst of doing that uh, they uh, they play smoke and mirrors with the causes uh, they dodge actually uh, dealing with the causes dealing with the root things dealing with the things that lead to the effects manifesting uh, and again as as long as you are trying to fix the disparity in education by uh, trying to deal with peer group pressures and ethnic culture uh, and uh, parents' education and employment, as long as you're uh, pawning off uh, the fixing of uh, uh, or the evening up of the educational disparity on those things, you will never even up the educational disparity because the educational disparity will continue to perpetuate those things. Uh, and so... Uh, here, let's go back through here. Uh, <clears throat> some of these factors may themselves be due. Some of these factors themselves be due to or exasperated by discrimination, but not to discrimination by the Rockford School Board, uh, which is, you know, again, they're saying so. They're, they are admitting that some of the things that they just pointed out, those things exist because of discrimination, uh, but they're saying just not the discrimination of the school board specifically. Uh, the board has no legal duty to remove those vestiges of societal discrimination for which it is not responsible. Insofar as the factors that we have mentioned, rather than unlawful conduct by the Rockford School Board in years past, are responsible for lags in educational achievement by minority students, the board has no duty that a federal court can enforce to help those students catch up. It may have a moral duty. It has no federal constitutional duty. Uh, again, and this is where we get into the uh, well, this is where we get into talking about uh, talk, uh, forcing societal changes, uh, forcing people to change their consciousness, uh, forcing people to change their their thought pattern when it comes to these issues is because you're seeing that uh, in this lawsuit, they are now saying that legally it is nothing else that they have left to do. It is now a moral issue, a moral obligation. And that is why we can't simply just uh, try to focus on fixing policies. We can't focus on just trying to fix laws. Uh, we can't just focus on litigation. We have to also focus on changing the uh, spirit and the nature of our community. We have to focus on changing the thought pattern of our community. We have to focus on changing the culture uh, of the society. Uh, so that way uh, when there becomes an, uh, a limit to what the law can do, when it becomes a limit to what can be done federally, uh, there will never be a limit to what can be done morally. There will never be a limit what to what can be done ethically. Uh, uh, when we're speaking about righteousness, when we're speaking about uh, doing things that are uh, are, are right, uh, and again, we're, we're going to get back. We're going to get back to the uh, uh, the dialogue as soon as possible. Right now, audibly, it's not possible to do the dialogue. So uh, again, we'll do we'll, we'll run through one of these uh, again another time as well, where we uh, can double back to some of these uh, portions. Uh, okay, so let's uh, where are we at. The reality is that okay, let's go to this next paragraph here. <laughs> No effort has been made by the plaintiffs, despite our warnings, to partition, however crudely, 
the lack in achievement that is due to the school board's past illegalities and the lag that is due to other factors, factors for which the school board bears no federal legal responsibility. The partition could be made by comparing minority academic performance in Rockford with the performance of minority students in other school districts after adjusting the various factors that are not the school board's legal responsibility, yet might be thought to influence the academic performance of Rockford's minority students, such as poverty, family stability, health, class size, and quality of teachers. There are statistical methods for holding these factors constant in order to isolate the influence, if any, of the board's illegal conduct on the academic performance of Rockford's minority students. No such scientific comparison has been attempted, nor even anything cruder. Uh, again, uh, let's, let's read through that one more time. Uh, no effort has been made by the plaintiffs, despite our warnings, to partition However crudely, the lag in achievement that is due to the school, board, school board's past illegalities and the lag that is due to other factors, factors for which the school board bears no federal legal responsibility. Uh, so again, this is just, they are pointing out that they continue to have uh, a lag in a space between uh, the Rockford Police Department officers uh, and uh, uh, there, excuse me, Rockford Police Department officers. There continues to be a, a lag between the RPS, in the RPS school district, it continues to be a lag uh, between the uh, black and minority uh, education uh, and the white education. Uh, and as long as that continues to be there for whatever reason, uh, we will continue, uh, it was almost 100% guaranteed that you will continue to see uh, perpetuated uh, 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 unequal opportunities in life. Uh, for these uh, different sets of people. Uh, and so again, we have to understand the roots of what this city was built on. What's up, what's up, what's up? Uh, uh, so again, here we got uh, Plaintiff's Failure. Uh, the Plaintiff's Failure to recognize the importance of trying to unpack the causes of disparate... Uh, let me see something, let me make sure, man. Let me make sure this is still audible. Uh, yeah, let me see something. Uh, no, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just go look over here and make sure myself. One second here. Uh, I just want to make sure this still we still still as audible as possible. Crazy. Yeah, but you can still hear shit in the background. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, again, I'm trying to. Uh, you got. I'm. Gonna, we gonna, we'll do. We'll have to do another one of these lives again because uh, the audio a little bit messed up. But uh, we're trying to uh, uh, point out the RPS school district lawsuit uh, versus the people who cares versus the RPS school district lawsuit and how uh, the miseducation of generations of black and brown children in this community. We live, we live, you gotta turn it down, we live, you gotta turn it down. Uh, uh, how these things have fed to uh, uh, these issues happening. Uh, again, we, uh, we got, I don't know, we got like two paragraphs, we got a couple more paragraphs here. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we at? Plans for right now, the point is to try to unpack the causes of any student. Okay. Uh, the plaintiff's failure to recognize the importance of trying to unpack the causes of disparate educational performance is illustrated by their contention that although the Rockford schools may now be desegregated, the classrooms within those schools remain segregated, and until they are desegregated, the decree must remain in force. What they mean by the classroom still being segregated is that minority students are underrepresented in advanced courses. We live, we live, DB, we live. You messing the live up. You messing the live up. What they mean by the classroom still being segregated is that minority students are underrepresented in advanced courses. Uh, yet enrollment in those courses is open. No one is being kept out. Uh, parentheses, if enrollment were not open, but instead were rationed by test scores, a much smaller percentage of minority students would be enrolled in the advanced classes. The magistrate judge found 6% rather than 23%. To suppose that minority students are enrolling in these classes at a lower rate than white students because of school segregation in the past is illogical or at least unsubstantiated. 
The schools are desegregated, the advanced courses are open to any student, and if fewer minority students are enrolling than their proportion in the school or the school district as a whole, the natural inference is not that the proportion is being held down by the fact that years ago the schools were segregated. That is conceivable, but so improbable that evidence is required to use the fact as a basis for continuing a federal judicial officer in control of the public school system. The plaintiff's case is an extreme version of post, post hoc erger propter hoc. I don't know what that means. Uh, it is provincial and naive to suppose that because Rafford once engaged in de facto segregation of his public schools, the choices of his minority students regarding voluntary enrollment in advanced classes open to all are a legacy of that segregation. Okay, uh, that was a lot there. A uh, portion of this slide just got fucked up. My fault, y'all. Uh, we'll, we'll run through some of this again. Uh, we outside. It's always unexpected things happening when we outside. Uh... So uh, here, uh, we can get this, get you uh, back going here. Uh, we touched on a lot since the last time that, uh, since the last time that we had Kay speak. So we're going to uh, let Kay chime in on some of the things that we uh, just went through here. So let I, I, I think that was a perfect example of doing the right thing at the wrong time. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Even the context. He, he, I know you didn't hear it in the audio because Leslie just played it back. Don't even touch on it. Don't, no, but, don't lie to it. Don't even. That's why I said that's why I But uh, about it, yeah. just keep it pushing. In general, the context was it was an angry resident. But when you hear about the history, he was talking about 50 years. So even when Leslie was talking about it's not just the precedent of 20, uh, 2001 of the case being won. You have to look at the systemic the systemic systemic nature and intended nature that had happened for generations. So what you were hearing in the background, I know it wasn't audible, but it was an angry resident who grew up during this time and was venting at a, a city hall meeting. Uh, <clears throat> just as a reference point, but it was wrong timing for it. In regards to this, you can't separate e economics from education. And for Rockford to deliberately, this, to boil this down to its, its bare essential parts, everything that Leslie's reading, obviously it's, it's a lot and it, there's legal jargon here and there, but he's reading it verbatim. It's speaking to the heart of Rockford's deliberate nature and coordinated efforts to suppress all aspects of a social environment of a thriving black and Latino community more so black because it's very deliberate against the black community and it's like the latino community was collateral damage they 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 caught the some of the shrapnel from the explosion that was meant for the black community so when when i say that rockford is 46 years behind it truly it truly is this is not my opinion it is this case is a precedent to prove my point to force an education system in 20,000 in 2001 to literally force them to come into the 20th century. That's what this case is. Rockford on its own, of its own volition, of its own free will is saying, we like it segregated the way that it is. We have no problem in our conscience collectively as a predominantly white society. We don't have a problem with suppressing any educational opportunities of this black community for the sake of a better overall Rockford or a better, better uh, educational system for that community, which translates to what? A lower incarceration rate. That's why many of the lives I, I, I make a, 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 a detailed effort to tie in protesting and the police brutality with the Justice Center. It draws revenue. It draws revenue for Rockford. I was told this by a lieutenant officer. It draws revenue for Rockford. I'm going to say that again for people that may not believe it. Again, this is not an opinion. The Justice Center draws revenue for Rockford. So Rockford was literally saying, we will coordinatedly suppress the educational opportunities of this demographic deliberately. Why? Because if you have an undereducated uh environment but you set it up so it's perpetual so it's generation after generation after generation you have the parents unable to help their kids with their homework that's what you have you have the parents not able to sit down with their kids and say you know what baby i only made it to eighth grade 
I'm sorry, I can't help you. You're in 10th grade. I only made it to 8th grade. Or the parents will say, I made it all the way through, but what you're working on now, I don't remember that. I never went to college. You're, 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 you're at a place now where some of the stuff is, is even more detailed than what it was when I was in school. I apologize. I can't help you. And, and, and I'm saying this, this, in this in this manner because this is still not the past. Right now in Rockford, right now today, to show reference of today, because people like talking about how long ago racism was in Rockford, and we're talking about right now today. They passed full scholarships for children in Rockford. There's a portion of them going directly to black students, if you don't know about this. As long as they have a 3.0 average in Rockford, the number one issue that these students have is they need mentorship. They need help doing their homework. They're able to sustain the 3.0, but they have to maintain it to get a full scholarship from Rockford. Am I saying this is in, in any ways makes up for the education disparity in Rockford? No. I feel like it's minimal at best because of how few it helps, given the fact that an entire social demographic has been disenfranchised. So do I clap and cheer over it? No, not at all. It still saddens my heart because it's, it's literally like having 100 hungry people on the verge of starvation. Then you dole out enough to keep them alive and you pick at random, you pick 10 out of the 100 and you give them a full meal. And then you tell everyone else, look at them as an example. You can aspire to eat like them. When the, when, when the, the, the case at hand is the other 90% is starving. They all should be eating. But you're, you're picking and choosing to make an example out of a few to say aspire to be like them when you know yourself that the whole hundred should be eating adequately. I but they're starving. Yeah, uh, those are all 100% very valid points. I think one of the other things that uh, we read just the most recent before we stopped was they were speaking about the underrepresentation of minority students in advanced courses. courses. And I think it's very, again, very telling that one of the reoccurring uh, explanations that they have for uh, one of the reoccurring explanations that they have for the dis the, the the disparity between uh, black and uh, or excuse me, between people, children of color and white children. It continues to they continue to be things that they set into motion themselves. Uh, and so when they say here that they don't have any proof positive that the reason it is more uh, white students enrolled in event, excuse me, advanced courses than it is students of color. Uh, they're saying that there's no proof that is because uh, black people were being and black and brown children were being discriminated in the past. But. You have to almost, you know, it's one of those things where, of course, they are not. There is no proof that says because uh, for generations, black people were black and brown students were uh, not allowed access to these advanced course classes. There's nothing that says that is why they are not in them now or that was why they were not in them at that point once they had started to solve some of these issues. But you have to understand that they are uh, residual effects of discrimination uh, that happened to generations. Uh, there are discrimin there are uh, residual effects of this uh, <clears throat> of these of this segregation of this uh, miseducation that happens. Uh, and one of those things is becomes a, a lack of confidence or a lack of belief or, uh, you know, a, a, a child's parents may not push them to be in an advanced class or might or a child may be nervous to be in advanced class uh, because of the fact that uh, the their, their 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 parents weren't in advanced classes or their parents haven't made them feel like uh, their parents didn't get to make them feel like they were smart or they were or they had a. Uh, 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 something to to provide the world as far as intellectually and so they don't know how to provide that feeling for their children uh, they don't know how to because they were never told they were intelligent or they were intellectual or that they were smart uh, they don't know how to tell those same things to their children and so that 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 goes to the 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 altering of confidence that <clears throat> confidence that goes to the psychological uh, the psychological effect of discrimination the psychological effect of racism the psychological effect of the 
facto segregation that was going on. And too often in these stories, too often in these uh, in these things, people don't want to take full responsibility for all the different iterations of racism, psychological, social, economic, educational. Uh, and so <clears throat> it's just very uh, it's very telling to uh, read this, you know, uh, and it tells you how deeply rooted racism is, because uh, on one hand, some of these things, uh, you can see how they are saying that this racism was uh, unconstitutional or was illegal when they did these things to solve it and to fix it. The courts did. And then you can see on the other hand uh, where the court is saying, well, it's only so much that can be done. It's only so much we can do. Uh, and so it just reminds you again uh, just how deeply rooted uh, these, the, you know, these issues are. So I'll, I'll pass it to Kay again to speak before we uh, dive back in reading any of this. I think it's it's very telling that even even when this uh, this went through in twenty in in the year that it did, you fast forward to now, the effects of this case are still felt in Rockford. I mean, the the economic disparity is the, the education is a cross section of the economic disparity of the West Side. It's a it's a cross section. I mean, <clears throat> I sat in a council meeting where you had. Alderman from other thriving districts that had, you can tell they were in districts that had better education, better, a, a lot of other things, a, a lot of other amenities that made their communities more thriving districts. You could just hear it and how proud they were and how, how they talked about it. And it was proof positive that the education is across, is, is an aspect of the larger picture. It's, it's a very telling aspect of the larger picture of the economic disparity where Rockford is deliberately economically, educationally, and socially sliding its west side. It, the education is a, is, a, is a number one factor because the lower the, the more you dis, you, the more you uneducate a population, you're guaranteeing a higher crime rate because you have less opportunities for education, less opportunities for jobs, uh, job opportunities. Less, less opportunity for higher paying job opportunities, less opportunity to, to go to college or, or, or go on beyond high school or even to finish high school. So you're guaranteeing a broken product. It's like, it's like a quality control in a company and they give you the specifications. Anyone that works at Chrysler, you know what I'm, where I'm going with this. You have the quality control. They show you the part and they say, the parts that you produce must look like this. Now imagine if the line, every single part was damaged. It was damaged. It's not acceptable. If, if, at that point, there, somebody's pulling the lever or the button or whatever they have, and they're shutting it all down and saying, we have to address the defect in our parts because now we have a batch of parts that look the same, but they're all defective. That's what the education system has be, had become. And even to this day, it's still effects of this case. That's what was happening with this case. They were they were crafting the education to be defective. Live, live. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. So it, 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 it just speaks volumes. And what I was saying about this meeting, because it, this still ties into today. They were proud and they were talking about money, money, money. And they were talking about the bike path. And every black alderman stood up. They all raised their hand to speak. They all said, wait a minute. I must address this. You're talking about a $3 million bike path when I have my constituents that don't have sidewalks. They don't have sidewalks in their communities. And yes, I know people may say, but, but that was a whole different meeting and they were talking about the bike path and that was specifically money allocated for a bike path. The point was you had the black constituents saying, we have bigger issues in our community than this bike path because we have children walking to and from school in the street in the winter because there is no sidewalk so they have to walk in the street this is what they're saying so anyone that still thinks there's this big gap between when this case took place the ripple effects are being felt in rockford illinois today where you have the disparity of people looking for a luxury, saying, okay, we have $3 million for a luxury, and it's going to draw people to ride bikes and be healthy and, 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 and uh, inline skating and everything else. Okay, that's great, and it's still true. But the point is you, you are stepping over major issues like education and social structure because you have a whole demographic that's saying every single alderman raised their hand and said, wait a minute, 
we all have constituents in our areas where they, they're asking, where's the budget for sidewalk, sidewalks? Sidewalks in 2020, 2021. Where are our sidewalks? I'm saying all that to say that this, it ties in with this. You can't say, well, the education is just one aspect where the black community was slighted. It's, it, it's a huge aspect of where the African-American community was slighted because now you're shaping the very future of not just a generation, you're shaping the outcome unless it has been altered or changed drastically. You're guaranteeing the production of a perpetual damaged project product. It's not just for a generation. You're, you're, you're guaranteeing a damaged product indefinitely, unless it's stopped. Yeah, and I think that uh, yeah, it's crazy out here tonight. <clears throat> I think that, uh, again, I, I, I love the way that Kay put that with uh, guaranteeing a damaged product. And uh, again, that, that, that's, that's why we want to uh, dive and dissect into some of these things, because so often people uh, so often people are misinformed about exactly how deep systemic racism and systematic racism is not only in this nation, but in this city and the reverberating effects that uh, it has. And so it's, I think it's uh, very good for us to <clears throat> to dive into this. Uh, so let's let's move on to this next uh, paragraph. Uh, OK, the plan is the plan is failure to recognize <clears throat> The plan is failure to recognize the importance of trying to unpack the causes of disparate educational performance is illustrated by their contention that although the Rockford schools may now be desegregated. Oh, I went through this one already before. Okay, my fault, my fault, y'all. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the plaintiff's principal argument for the indefinite continuation of the decree is that the school board has not been complying with it in good faith. The difference between technical compliance and compliance in good faith is that the latter form of compliance does not exploit loopholes and, ambigu and ambiguities. OK, so let's read through that one more time. The plaintiff's principal argument for the indefinite continuation of the decree is that the school board has not been complying with it in good faith. The difference between technical compliance and compliance in good faith is that the latter form of compliance does not exploit loopholes and ambiguities. Uh, and again, I think that that's something that's important to point out because uh, that is something that has that's one of the that's one of the number one tools of sy systematic and systemic racism is loopholes and ambiguities. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good, What's good, What's good, What's good DP? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? We live. We live. We live. All right, we live. Bet. Okay, bet. I, I feel you. I feel you, DP. I love you, DP. I love you, DP. Man, you so crazy. I, I, we live. Hey, listen, man. These white folks in Rafa been playing forever, man, and you niggas know it too. And y'all stupid for acting like this nigga gotta sit here and tell y'all something, man. It just sounds stupid to me, man. I just see how they did me and how they did my little cousin and them and some more niggas, man. Are you do, do we? I actually gotta really sit here and talk about this. We do gotta it talk. Stupid, we gotta man. talk, but we gotta talk to them, DB. Stupid, they don't it believe stupid, it unless though. we tell them, DB. We got stupid, to, though. DB. It stupid, we, but we got to. It sounds stupid. We Let, got man, to. I just wanna say this. Please don't right, put my likeness on this uh, thing. You know, I'm trying to say for real, because live, you know what, live, you live. nigga, you live. nigga. Oh, we live. Yeah, man, but look, I'm down here with the protester, man. Look, doing this shit for real, man. Listen, man, we've been doing this shit forever, man. I've been getting discriminated on every time I didn't walk down the street, man. These people can't stand me. But you know what? I still blow up. And I still do what I got to do, man. You know why? Because I stay out of niggas' way and I stay out of people's face, man. I stay out of people's face, man. And I only come to support when it's time. That's what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, man, I, I ain't going to say nothing. DB. DB. That's the real DB. That's DB was down here playing some, some speeches earlier. I was trying to get it. I was trying to get it in the bag. I'm happy he popped up, let people see him. I was getting in the bag. We, you know, uh, it, but, but, deep, but again, DB, we got to talk to him. We got to talk to him, DB. No, we appreciate. Yeah, chicken cracklers. Yeah, I'm a, I'm finna try one of them right now. I'm finna try one. We on a quick little break. I done had this is my first. Well, I done had. It's been a while. You take a little quick, a quick little break. Okay, we on a little. Mm.
to say this. He said mm-hmm. he said it, it oh, seems well. odd to have to explain certain things. Right. But how does that yeah. say it go? And uh, everybody's heard it from either aunt, uncle, dad, mother, brother. What's understood doesn't have to be explained. Obviously, something in Rockford has to be explained to be understood because the silence of the black community is deafening here. I don't think it's so much explaining it to him. I think it's the mobilization of us as a collective voice in representation. I need some hot sauce for this. McNamara is the is the is the police boss. It don't get no higher than that. It don't get no higher than that. Don't let them fool you. That's a fact. It don't get no higher than That's that. That's a fact. He act like he was cool when he went to goddamn the, the high school with the people. Yeah. But now he goddamn it don't understand it no more. That's a fact. But that but we go we gonna make them understand it. We gonna remind them. We gonna remind them. I can't go to jail out here tonight. No, 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 don't go. We we not gonna go. We not gonna go to jail, DB. No, 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 we not. No, we not gonna let that happen. That we ain't gonna let that happen. I know, I know, DB. I know you got that. I know you. I know, DB. I know. I'm knowing you the real DB. Listen, let me say something. Yeah. Yeah. You want here? You want this one? You want this mic? Okay. Hey, let me tell you something. Listen, man, let me tell you something, man. Every time I leave out the house, man, I be scared that I'm not going to come home. Damn. That's a worry, man. Do you understand how that really feels, though? Listen, I be talking to my white friends, and they don't even understand that. They don't, they don't understand. They don't understand. They don't understand. You don't understand think you're going to come home. I said, I don't know. I might not come home. That's true. And they be just so up in arms and crazy. Rockford's a great place. And no. What do you mean? No. Rockford killed That's black why, people. That, they killed yep. that black boy in that church. Yep, my boy. They killed my that boy. black boy in the church. Now that now he if right I can't get in the church and be safe, then where can I go? Nowhere. Not where if you go? If Nowhere. I can't go in the church and put my hands up yep. and say, "Listen, officer, I don't want no problem." Where can I go? Nowhere. If you can't go to, you can't go to <laughs> Jesus go to in Rockford. You can't even run to Jesus. To to That's how deep the racism is in Rockford. You can't even run to Jesus. Wicked, man, there's some evil, it, it, it shit, is. satanic shit it going is. on here, it man. Is. It These is. people that sold their soul. My dad told y'all. Yes. They just sold their soul. Yes. Man. Yes. Listen to me. They got black blood running all down their hands. They murdered a man, man in a church. They murdered a man, man in a church. They murdered Logan Bell near a church. They killed two boxers right in the middle of the church, man. Yep. It's Listen it's to me. I was right there. These my little nephews, man. I'm out here in the streets for real. Like, I'm not no faggot ass nigga. I ain't no. Uh, 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 I'm, uh, uh, I'm one of the real ones. Right, we, we feel you want to be careful. I done raised the streets. Be careful though. with epithets. We want to be careful with I done raised the streets, though. I mean, I, know, I, I know, am I know, DB. I know. I, know, I feel you, DB. Listen to okay. me, man. Listen to me. They yeah. killed. Look, man. Look, man. Look. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm I'm waiting on them to kill Leslie, and that shit is so crazy. And that, and that's yeah, but I told my I, t- I told my baby mama that the other day. I said, you know what? I said they're gonna kill Leslie one day. That, they might. I said they're gonna be out here one day by yourself. Five in the morning, four in the morning, they gonna yeah, choke yeah, him, yeah, and they gonna try to say, "Oh, he resisted the rest. He was resisting the rest. That, that he did it. He did it. He, he, he did it. Want. He was resisting the rest. That is, that is what they want. And he gonna be dead. He gonna be dead. That is, that is he gonna what be they dead. want. That is what they want. He gonna be dead. That, it, that is. That's why we have to. But we gotta struggle yeah, man, through that. If I man. was to be dead tomorrow, the struggle will continue through that. But let me ask you this though. I'm interviewing now. How do you feel living in a town? Where niggas don't stand up for who they supposed to be and stand up for who they supposed to be. How do you but, feel about that? Let me ask you that. Okay, though. okay, but th- so this is what I would say back to that. I think that we're in the process of changing the consciousness <clears throat> of the community members so that we people are standing up. Damn. That's what's happening. They, we, I can't, I ain't going to, I can't drop people names. Damn. I can't be dropping names. Damn. I, Damn. I, Damn. DB, I Damn. can't drop Damn. names Damn. on Damn. here. We Damn. live, Damn. DB, I'm we I'm live. I'm live. I'm live. We man, live, DB. I know we can't be man, saying people's names. Man, the commu- I'm telling you, that, man, the community is shaking up. Now, they, they, they realizing that caring about this is caring about themselves. You right. That's what we got, and Listen that's what we tapping into people like. I took you through the hood. You roll with me. Yeah, through the hood. yeah. You we gonna be, we gonna be every, back through there every, again. Every, every real nigga in the streets, we, we go. We, up yeah, on. we gonna keep, we gonna keep politicking. They gave us love. Yeah, they show love. They not here with us now. But they gonna be. 
When it's, I'm telling you, DB, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. Slow motion. Slow motion better than no motion. I think that you gotta die first. No, nah, that that, that, that might be first. his. We that is that's that's that might be. Because your that might be, but it's 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 bigger than me. Mouth. It's bigger than us. It's bigger yeah, than any I'm individual. Are you ready to die? Yes. Are you a weatherman? Yeah. <laughs> nah, D, you crazy. Are no, you I'm a not a weatherman. Ma Malcolm X said the price of freedom is death. You got to be prepared to pay the price of freedom. He, he said you got to be prepared to pay the price of freedom. They asked him, what's the price of freedom? He said the price of freedom is death. It sounds about right. If the, it's the, somebody dying is the reason that we got to be. It took a certain amount of, a certain amount of slaves died, well, and that was the beginning and the end of slavery. So that's, go ahead, go ahead, DB. Go ahead, DB. Go ahead. Because you're a real nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? And I say the word nigga because you yeah, know no, no, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they've been calling us forever. Oh, no, that's a fact. They've and been so calling I, us niggas forever. I learned forever. to accept it. Yeah, and I'm telling you, these white people love when I say it. They, they oh, yeah, smile. No, no, no. That's they, not the, that's, that wasn't the word. It was a different word I was talking about. No, no, no. But that's what I'm saying. Listen. Listen, yeah, listen, let's, let's, let me let's, tell you something. Let's, let's, let's hey, I ain't been on no po politically correct line. I'm already knowing you're not political. No, we but in I'm the a, community. I'm going to tell you we who I am, though. Yeah, these you the niggas real just out here, the, man, these police is out here fucking up our people, man. They doing uh, all this uh, shit. Y'all, they, they finna evict y'all okay, niggas out y'all houses, man. Yeah, on the 31st, the eviction, the eviction but, moratorium. In y'all don't know that they ain't over here talking about that. Y'all ain't been paying no rent since y'all was on goddamn it COVID nineteen. Listen to what I'm telling you, man. Y'all got about two weeks. Man, these people is coming through and they finna ramshack everything. And guess what they doing? The government doing because they know you niggas is behind and they know that the uh, the landlord behind. So they buying everything up because they gonna mow it down. They gonna mow it down. They finna gentrify this whole area. Oh, that's a fact. And they finna do all of this shit and they finna bring all of the white people down here that they wanted to be down here. Me and McNamara's sister gonna be it's down here right. living across the street. I'm right. telling you some real shit. It's this is right. a uh, this is the overplay for the underplay. Right here, that's what they fact. doing? That's a fact. And on the thirty first, it's gonna start. I'm telling you, that's, that's a fact. It. For anyone that heard, caught what he just said about the gentrification of downtown Rockford, why did you get involved, K? I'm a business consultant. I I sat in meetings in a suit and tie before I looked like this. Before I made myself like this to get involved, and I got involved like this because of watching. Facebook live post threatening this man's life and the police didn't do squat. There wasn't a single officer, there was a parks commission, no sheriff's department, no one looked into any of the death threats. And then even after that, for as long as we've been out here, no one's ever looked at any of the death threats. Those should have been sent directly to the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Everybody knows that. But that shows you the lack of value that even our police force here haven't taken any of these threats seriously. They're supposed to go to the FBI. I shouldn't have to go to council meeting and say, why are you wearing a vest in here? Because we still get active death threats, and I'm getting looked at like I'm crazy. They can't stand you. Either, and again. So they told us. No, yeah. That, and that, for you. No, that's well, a fact. I, I know, brother. Because that's a fact. Is covered up. That's a fact. But, why do you wear a vest? Why? Because we had people in Wisconsin, even more, but even before Kenosha and after Kenosha, talking about being locked and loaded. No, yeah, and that's, and again, uh, that no is no follow up from the local police. Yeah. No. Hey, let me let me let me let me let me. Let me, let me, let me, let me right down here. Let me let me say something about let me let me let me say something about Kenosha. Let me say something about Kenosha since he just said he brought that up. The white boy then killed three four people in Kenosha. Man, it, listen, listen, listen. It's a, this really happened. This white boy killed a three, four people, man. They families is hurt. You know how his baby mama feel right now, man. The, the other, the boys that got killed, man. They baby mamas and kids and feel crazy. But listen, man, guess what they did? They put the boy in juvenile detention. In juvenile detention. They didn't want to take him to the county jail. And, and guess what the Trump people did? They bought him out. They bought him out of jail for billion dollars. You understand me? Man, these people got y'all food, man. Let me, I'm telling you, man. Listen, but that's why I don't even like to talk to you niggas in Rockford, man. Listen, man, because this shit is so crazy. Because they've been doing us wrong for so long. I can't believe that we not all down here acting crazy. I'm ready to throw some bricks through these walls. I'm finna throw some bricks through the walls. Listen, I'm telling you. Listen, man. Hey, I hope y'all watching the police and everything. I'm finna throw some bricks through the wall.
Well, this is all about and again, strategy and coordinated strategy. Yeah, I got involved uh-huh, because yeah. I had a strategy in mind. I coordinated yeah. it with Leslie. Yeah. We've been talking ever since. Yeah. I am a businessman first. Uh, well, no, 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 not a businessman first. Well, uh, when well I you're black, but we, I own yeah. a business. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been running a business for 20 years. Right. Before I even uh, moved here. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I say businessman, yeah. I don't put black in front of business. Because the money is green. Well, uh, well, well, we want, well, we want to be careful. What the, the, we're not money is not the the, no, no, the no, problem is the the root of business and money have as, you know. Me as a man. But extrapolating capitalism out has led to as, the exploitation of as a as a self employed businessman. It doesn't define me as a human being. I'm a human being first. But I'm I'm using that as a defining point. I'm not. I didn't put black in front of anything that I am as a human being. Because it doesn't define me in the in the level of business. I, I don't I don't say I'm a black businessman or I'm looking for black business only. I'm looking my concern for this community since since this went on a tangent is I don't want to see the black community disenfranchised while they draw millions of dollars, millions of dollars towards Perryville. <laughs> Think I'm lying, look it up Damn, online. Bro. Look at the property value around the, the, the potential casino. Look at the value of the property. <laughs> Now, <laughs> why am I saying that? Think about what. what well, let's let's we, we, well let's we need work there? and let's also remember what we came we came on this for the how RPS school district two hundred five. Uh, so no, we want to sort of stay on that, that as much as possible. So we want to. So, so we got to. The gotta, education we got, gap, the disparity of the education, again has ripple effects from this case. The, okay. re, the whole relevance of the live tonight was about this case. And so let's 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 hit these last two paragraphs. Oh no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Still impacting Rockford right now today. Okay, so let's hit let's hit these last three paragraphs real quick. I'm a care act, man. Listen, yeah, and we gonna hit these last three lawsuits. That's what we're talking about. Listen, my dad found a law. Shoot, man, on these people, Derek Shelby, man, you better goddamn it, Google it, man, and do your homework. Listen, man, we filed a, a, a lawsuit. My Aunt Flossie and all these people got behind it, man, and we won. We beat these yep. white folks. Yep. Yeah. But let me tell you something. They got old, man, and they relaxed, and all you dumbass, young-ass niggas, man, y'all just let them people do what they want to do again right. because they doing the same shit right now that they was doing when they filed a lawsuit. Yep. You can't tell us we can't go, goddamn it, to wherever school we want to go to. Them people know they put the best books in Gifford. Why would we want to go to Auburn? Why would I want to send my kids to Auburn High School and I know y'all got the best books in Gifford? I know y'all got the new books in Gifford. I know the new teachers and the best teachers that was with the credentials and everything they going to work at Gifford. Why would I want to send my kids to Auburn? But y'all masqueraded because y'all got the gifted program at Auburn. That's so y'all can pick up the stats. But we know what y'all doing. Why would y'all have? Why y'all got the gifted program at Auburn? That, because y'all can pick up the stats with them gifted kids. I know what you're doing, man. My daughter was gifted, man. I am DB. You know what I'm saying? I come from a long line of stuff like that, man. But I'm just telling you, man. Listen, man. If y'all don't wake up, man, and listen, man, these people is killing y'all. I'm telling you, and I'm blessed, man. The Lord that blessed me, you know, I live in a $250,000 house. I drive a Camaro. I got my kids at school and it's some more shit. So I don't, I don't have to be out here for me. I'm out here for y'all, man. When I see Leslie out here living and, and, and staying in the streets, I pull up over them with T-Vine, man. You know T-Vine, the best barber in Rafa, man. I pull up over with T-Vine, man. He said, man, look, bro, out here, goddamn, giving it up. These people don't care nothing about them. Show them you care. That's a fact. Pull up and show them you care. That's a fact. For real, man. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Y'all seeing me, man. And we doing this shit live. But I'm really here. And I can go anywhere else in Rockford right now. I got a a pocket full of money. And I'm drinking good and I'm smoking good. So trust and believe that I can go anywhere I want to go right now in Rockford, Illinois. But I'm down here with the protesters doing my part. So you niggas fuck y'all. And that's what I and they, and they get, say that though, and I'm DB and I can say that though. Right, you and don't we even know me like it, that. no, yeah, and we and it's time but passed. I am DB. Yeah, you the real D, you the real DB. Man, you know. I'm him, man. I uh, raised all these niggas out responsibly, here. doing everything responsibly. Man, uh, man. But uh, again, one of the things that uh, yeah, we're touching on is how the school board, how, how the school board, these issues, uh, how extrapolate. Oh, for real? Okay. Uh, let's let's hit these last uh, uh, last little pieces here. Uh, or not? Uh, 
Okay, the plaintiff's principal argument. Okay, for sure, for sure. The, the plaintiff's principal argument for the indefinite continuation of the decree is that the school board has not been complying with it in good faith. They haven't been complying. That's a fact. The difference between technical compliance and compliance in good faith is that the latter form of compliance does not exploit loopholes and ambiguities. Phillips Medical I'm Systems International. Uh, yep, <clears throat> it is not as the plaintiffs would have it that the school board must quote actively in quote support the decree, must express quote commitment in quote to it, and above all must not criticize it. The undemocratic implications of this position leave us almost speechless. Our elected officials, the members of the school board, elected long after and not complicit in the illegalities that gave rise to the litigation, forbidden under threat of never resuming control of the public school system that they were elected to govern, to criticize a decree that in pursuit of an ambitious and possibly quixotic scheme of social engineering has imposed a formidable tax burden on the people who elected those officials? That's a crazy question. Okay. Are the elected officials, the members of the school board, okay, are the elected officials... Uh, hold on, real, real, hold on real quick. Let me see how this... Uh, are the elected really valid, officials man. to criticize it's the really decree valid. that I'm gonna raise two up issues. and ambitious. And the second issue, I'm going to give y'all in a minute, but I'm going to give y'all the first issue now. Mm -hmm. Why the hell these people keep talking about it ain't no, nobody want to work these jobs, nobody want to do this with these jobs. Mm -hmm. But every time a nigga try to get a job, you want to run his background check and you want to drop him because of some shit that happened with his baby mama three years ago. Listen to what I'm saying, man. They need right. to drop the background check. I am That's on that. I just talked to David Vella, That's my true. lawyer, man. I'm just talking to him right now. He finna propose a new bill. With the, uh, as soon as they go back for the uh, winter session, the fall session, they on vacation right now. As soon as they go back for the fall session, David said he's going to introduce that bill. They should not be able to run your background check and eliminate you from a job based on the fact of some other shit that you want to do. Now, if you want to work at Walmart and you got a, a theft on your background, then no, nah, nigga, you can't work uh, there. Uh, but if no, you no, gotta, no, 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 that's you not true. Walmart you got well, a gun no, no, if you, well, if you, you want to walk at Walmart and before you uh, were I said accused, you work in Walmart. yeah, yeah, but even if you was accused of stealing or you got charged of stealing, no, he can still work there. We can get him that. No, <laughs> uh, no, just but because somebody stole, case, but just because somebody stole something in the past does not mean case, that they were still something in the future. If right, you got a gun case, but I agree. We saying that. the same. We saying yeah. the same thing. Yeah, no, right. No, because if you stole some shit, you can't work here. No, no, no. That's not. No, nah, that's not how it works. So well, but, 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 but that's but different. But you would that. that. Yeah, yeah. But we're right. If I I sold some drugs back in '98. Why should that stop me from getting a job in 2021? What the fuck? Right, that's true. No, that's true. That's, le I, that's if legal. If ain't no work here and ain't nobody selling no work for cheap, then I can bag up and cook up. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what the problem is? No, no, and if, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say for real. Now, speak on that? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, All right, let me get to my man. He's going to speak on that. I'm a big point too next. Now, he, he raises a good point because if you look at how Western European jails are run, this is he, he, Google this, please. You look at Western European jails and the incarcerate, incarceration. Their whole focus really is rehabilitation. rehabilitation. That's the focus. They don't focus on putting people in jail for life. They don't focus on they have, they have jails. That's our jail where they let the people. They gave them keys to open the door. It looks like a hotel. They go in the they go no in the jail. It looks, that's no way. There's no way. They go in there. They got knives, forks. They got their own bedrooms. They got TV. That guy was on a bike because he, he had a DWI. So he rode up on a bike. And they, he had a key. And you, it looked like he was going to a hotel. And they kept saying the focus was rehabilitation. The focus here is incarceration and monetizing on people's lives. Monetize are you paying your bail? Look at even the name, bail. What do we have to pick? What are we out in the field picking? Bails. Either bails of tobacco, bails of cotton. Now they got us in the courtroom paying my bail. Paying my bail. Paying my bail. Okay. So that's why that's that's why they have the bail. That's why they didn't change the name. That's why they didn't change the name. The bail. You gotta pay that bail. You said you had wow. another point. Pay that bail. You said you had another point, DB. They monetize us. You gotta pay your bail or be able to walk away 
and potentially have to go back to court, might be locked up. But at least you have this pseudo freedom. Let's go back to point two. Because I'm going to go back to point two. You know, I went to point one, man. These people is playing with y'all, talking about some coronavirus. They said in the third, you know, they don't want y'all to vote, but they still want to ring your back. But I'll check to see who your mama was. That shit is crazy. But let's go to point two. Fuck that shit. Let them break, let them run the background check, see who your mama was, this, that, the third, or whatever. And until they stop that, they affect them. But point two is. I ain't even finna say it on here, man, because I, you know what, I don't think it will be received well, man, because, you know, at the same time, man, I'm really mad at a lot of black people, man. I'm mad at a lot of black folks that I listen to. You know, some of my white friends, they be more aggressive and more, they feel just, they feel it in their bones. They just sorry. They sorry. They mad. They mad because they embarrassed, and they mad because they sorry, and I love them type of white people, and I connect with them. I hope some of y'all listen to me tonight, you know what I'm saying, for real, because it ain't no, it ain't nothing wrong to feel like that, you know, because you should be mad. You should be upset, man. These people are playing with everybody, man. They playing with y'all. They taking y'all rights to vote. They done made all these discrimination uh, lawsuits. What y'all going to do with Donald Trump getting there again uh, in two years, man? And he going to laugh at y'all this time because he going to really play with y'all. Because he know he can't get elected again, but unless he changed some shit. But if he come back next time, he's going to be the king. I don't think he's going to ever leave. So, I mean, y'all better do what the fuck y'all can and stand up, man. These people that's playing with y'all, man. Y'all going to let them play with y'all. But listen, baby, tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something, man. It, listen, man. Listen, man. Donald Trump is one of the coldest motherfuckers I ever seen do this shit. <laughs> Nino Brown didn't have shit on this nigga. He would have ate Nino's ass for breakfast. Nino came in there, this is a skilly goody motherfucker, goddamn it, blah, 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 G money, blah, 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 blah. He would have whooped Nino ass. Because Donald Trump don't give a fuck about nobody but himself. You know what I'm saying? He teaching y'all. He teaching y'all how to do it. He teaching y'all how to do it. He raising white people. You know what I'm saying? And we don't raise our black folks. This is over with. This is really over with. Yeah, we I do. I mean, they just, they just ran in the Capitol. And if there had been black people running in the Capitol, oh, yeah, we would have been dead. Yep. It would have been AKs going on. Yep. It would have been all type of That's shit going on. It would have been justified, too. The white people would have been like, oh, it would have been justified. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, right. Officer right. Kruger had right to feel like that. It was three uh, black people charging the him at once. So he went on the letters and took scene off. And then Officer Dribble and was justified. That's how that shit would have went. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They didn't right. even spray them white folks with mace. Nothing. I mean, right, right. listen to what I'm doing, man. I watched Lindsey go to jail out here. He laid on his back, and then people that rolled him over and some bullshit. But I'm saying he's doing it for y'all, but it, it's so funny, though. It's like, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. I tell this nigga to quit doing this shit. No, nah, no, nah, we can't quit. We you know what I'm saying? I tell this nigga to quit doing quit. this shit. I'm going to just be real because at the right. same time, you niggas don't care. You niggas don't gotta, care. We got to change the consciousness. They fucked your mama over. They fucked yep. your baby daddy yeah, over. That's why did. your baby daddy in jail. Like, you that's keep calling him. He calling it. He wanted some money on his books and all that old bullshit. Your kids wonder where he at. And, right. uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> but y'all don't do nothing. I mean, I'm going to get off the mic because I'm I'm doing too much. No, no, no. For real, man. But I'm a real hustler, but right. I come from a revolutionary family. You know what I'm saying? My dad been doing this shit forever, man. But I'm not out here for no fame. I'm just out here for you niggas to just come through. Right. Man, because I can't even say what I'm doing out here downtown on you niggas' ass. I'm doing the most, though. Trust and believe. I wish they could flip that bitch around on that Camaro that I'm riding in <laughs> and show you what I'm really doing out here. No, but I ain't going to do that. Do that. No, but listen to what I'm saying, that. though. That's what I'm right. saying, though. Y'all need to come down and show these niggas some support. I might go to jail tonight. I don't give a fuck. I done been to prison. I don't give a fuck about the game. We're going to keep you out I'm of gonna jail. I'm going to give this back to these niggas and let these niggas uh, hopefully get y'all in the right way. That's right. That's right. Hopefully get y'all in the right, right way because y'all y'all in compliant, man. This is rack for it. This is rock for it, man. Listen, man. Yeah, six years if, if we was white, if we was white and we was calling white people down here, it, uh, the streets would be full. You would be able to drive to this motherfucker. Is he 
You wouldn't be able to drive. I'm, I'm not lying. lying. Right. You wouldn't be able to drive through this motherfucker. No, <laughs> I'm lying. not lying. He's not lying. If, if we was white and we was calling white people, you wouldn't be able to drive through this bitch. It'd be so many white people, and they'd be like on the news. Oh, the white people really came out and did their thing. And you got know, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. they control. But I that's but, you know, and too that goes uh, back into that's the what psychological. Make me do the makeup. Right. No. That's what make me get the mic up because you niggas is sorry, man. My daddy told me that. He said, man, these niggas in Rafford, man. He said, man, they, they don't care about themselves. But we got They're running from who they are. That's how they ended up in Rafford because wasn't no niggas born in Rafford. <laughs> man, we come from Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, all type of places, man. Y'all ran from who y'all were. That's what I'm saying, man. But, but, but. You I know did. niggas originate from here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but again, we want to. Uh, those are some of the psychological I'm effects. I told uh, the truth because y'all couldn't tell the truth. I told the truth because y'all couldn't tell the truth. <laughs> So don't be mad at you. Nah, we not mad at you, DB. We ain't not mad at you. We not mad at you. A few things we probably got to. Man, fuck that. DB going to be on here. If DB on here. Yeah, you on here. I'm going to tell them. No, yeah, no, it's not nothing wrong. It's not definitely not nothing wrong with that. We are. We but we, that, that, that's the so, that's the psychological effects of racism. Those are some of the psychological effects. That's some of the, you know, and, you know, and again, those are some of the psychological effects of racism. Is that, you uh, know, <clears throat> and so this is again, this is the live from Occupy from City Hall. We it's it's right now put underneath RP. I'm not gonna have to change the title of what this is. It's no longer the. RPS school district versus two of I'm hungry. I gotta go to something. Uh, but uh, but I'm hungry. Some some to eat. Fry, but you know, but uh, no, that's a fact. That's a fact. We gotta change. We gotta change the consciousness of the community. That's what. Yeah, it's the psychological psychological effects of racism. But that's why we have to be the standard to show that. Yes, we have to be the vanguard. We have to be the guardians of the struggle. Yeah, that's a fact. That. So beat up, man, and that, yeah. and that's why we're yeah. not railing them yeah. because we know you, to be better sometimes yeah. you need an example of what better looks yeah. like yeah. That's, what, that's why you here yeah that's why i'm here people keep asking me what the masks were for the, these masks were not to protect me no, yeah. bottom line these masks were to keep blood out of my face if it had to go that way that's right. what this was for right. that's that's right. Right. this is not fear right. this that's is not I'm fear saying, we had death threats that's right. what i'm saying right. we got people where they're getting a wink and a nod all summer long from the police down the street, a wink and a nod to hit on protesters, whether they were black or white. We, but we, they, they and changing they, they our whole focus was these they, people need I'm to be able to no, exercise their the First Amendment right to speak. Man, no one has the ability the to take man. someone else's First Amendment right away, and that's why I'm here. That's that's my motivation. Nobody's gonna silence. <laughs> we not the weather no. man, DB. That's his no. DB. We not the weather man. You don't even know who no. the weather man. He know. He know who the weather man. You know who the weather men are from uh, in the sixties. They in yeah. the yeah yeah yeah. Okay, no, okay, no. We that can't. You gotta you gotta, you gotta you gotta get that mic, DB. Yeah, oh. Okay. I don't want the mic. Okay, that's fine. Rockford, but, Rockford has. I I, I I say it like this. But, okay. He he made he made points and he 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 cracked jokes, but y'all know he's he, in the jokes. You know that there's that truth <laughs> that that cuts. Who's down here? It's one thing to honk. It's one thing to throw up a fist. Who's really down here? But but those people, a lot of those people are, you know, where again, that's why we no, are. No, I, I get it. We have into that consciousness. We have, we have a layer of people that, that, that have started, but we have to further that consciousness. To the credit of the movement, how many days have we been here? We've been two hundred and sixty at City Hall. Two hundred and sixty days at City Hall. Every Monday, every Monday there are city council meetings. Every Monday there are city council meetings. Every Monday there are city council meetings where you can where you can sign up and say what you need to say about how you feel. You, he's absolutely right. You got to sign up on Friday so that your voice can be heard, and then you get your three minutes. Right, your three minutes. You can't just freestyle it and stand up. You have to be. It's the protocol is you have to. Do it on Friday because the 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 Freedom of Information Act is they have to be able to put your name in there to show who's going to speak because you may speak on something that's valid but it's not written in the documentation so you have to be registered on Friday 
so that you can speak on Monday. You have to do that. You have to. So it's not a, it's not just enough to say, well, tell it here. Hey, 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 let me say something too at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, big up to all of them niggas over there saying, you know what I'm saying? They really doing their thing over there at the liquor store. I fuck with all them niggas, man. Hey, if y'all get out, man, y'all need to go through there, man, and holler at them, man. Let them get y'all money, man. Stop giving it to them other folks. But listen, man, hey, back to the game, though. We down here. I ain't seen nobody pull up, man. Let me tell you something. Man, I, listen, man, I am DB, man. My Camaro parked across the street, man, and I'm doing my thing. You know what I'm trying to say for me, man. If anybody want to ride and need a ride, man, I'm going to give them a ride. But if I need to spend some money, I'm going to do that too. So, I mean, you ever say something, man? I don't, I don't, I can't, anybody else who don't do it, I, I can't respect that. I can't respect that. I got too much to do, man. I got kids, man. And listen, I'm probably getting money more harder than anybody who listens to probably getting money. Who knows, man? I mean, text me if you think you're getting more than I do, but I do live in a $250,000 crib and drive a Camaro. So, you know what? My stress is up there. And I've still got time to really come down here right. and make sure that it's put together the right way, right. man. Right. And make sure that my people have something, man. So, that's what I'm saying, man. So, don't never feel like you're doing too much because Whatever you think you're doing, somebody else is doing the next thing, man. So you need to get out here and help some shit that really matter, man. You worried about your kids or you worried about yourself, man. That's I'm down here right now for the Maya Well, That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? She's six years old, man. If she grew up in Rafa living like this, man, where goddamn it, only the black women can get money, but they only can get so much money. I mean, they really won't let them get no money, you know what I'm saying? They a little black woman get so far, but. They really won't let her get up to the ladder the way she need to be. They ain't gonna let her be no Kamala Harris or nobody. And the black people can't, and the black men can't get no jobs because they run a background tax. So I mean, do you want to live in this town? That's why we got. That's why we got. You ain't gotta move. All you gotta do is tell these people to stop playing with you. Exactly. Time. There you go. Exactly. That's a fact. We have to voice that. Rockford we have to is, voice that thing. We have to be the voice. When you Google this, it may have changed. But Rockford, the last time I Googled it, Rockford was the ninth. Worst, most desirable place in America for black people to black get ahead. Black it was number nine family. Yep. for black say, families. Black okay. Family. Yeah. And that's why. We're that's black that's families. people that may want to put it. Ninth family. worst place for black families. But in the article, it, it was spoke about black men and opportunities to get ahead. That's that's yeah, appalling. Like that, that is appalling. That is not an opinion. So. It's this is fact. a fact. These are facts. That Rockford is wor ranked ninth worst city for black families in America to get ahead, raise their families, and have a future. Have some a good school for them to go to the. Teacher. And everybody knows Rockford is one of the highest tax states in America. So to really get city, ahead, city, you city. can't even be average to tax, other states in America. Oh, listen to me, what I'm saying. I got the ninth worst chance to go to work. And be able to come home to my family and say, yep. you know, and, that, and hey, again, and again, for anybody that might be just tapping in, for anybody that's just, like, for anybody who might just be tapping in, this is live from Occupy City Hall. Uh, this is one of the craziest live from Occupy City Halls that we've had. Uh, uh, but this is part of what the you know being outside means. Uh, we multiple times uh, so. <laughs> We sort of veered a little bit off the original subject of the RPS school district, uh, but we're still talking about uh, the issues of police terrorism, mass incarceration, and racial injustice, uh, and how those issues uh, interrelate to. I mean, yeah, we just, and we just speaking about how those issues uh, still relate to us uh, right now, 2021. Okay, here you want? Okay, I'm, I'll let I'll let DB keep on talking. No, man, I don't need no, no okay, right okay. I'm just telling you, man. McNamara's right. gonna be down here. Okay. All this shit gonna be different. Okay, man. but we got it. We got the live going, so we got it. Okay, so the main person, one person got to talk. Whoever got the mic got to do the to talk. So. I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> Ain't nobody commenting on shit. Yeah, but people watching. These people watching. Here. These niggas people watching. Here. We got five watching, people though. in. It's six people watching. Listen, it's six man, people watching. Much, and I'm okay. gonna go, and I ain't affiliated with none of these niggas. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> Listen, man, I think they all is cool and they doing what they got to do. And I love this shit and I respect this shit. But do I put my name and my tag on it? My name and my tag is on DB. 
right. and everybody know me, and they know who I am. So I don't have to endorse nobody. Right, there's nothing wrong with but that. But my game is what I'm telling you, man. Like, man, I and a lot of people watch. If you ain't down work. here, you ain't in the way to get down here, or whatever. Like, right. it might not be a lot of like, listen, people. I didn't grow up with Lizzie. I didn't grow up with Lizzie. I didn't know Lizzie before I see what type of nigga Lizzie was. And once I seen Rosie down here really like ready to go for it though, fact. I came and I, I made myself known, didn't I? Am I lying? No, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact, DB. That's a fact. And I just want to also say, uh, even though it may be a small amount of people watching now, a lot of people watch these afterwards. We get most of our plays in the next 20 Man, fuck all that shit. Yeah, right. We don't give a fuck where you get your plays. Let me tell you this. <laughs> I made myself known. If you ain't made yourself known and you out there and you is fucking with me and you fucking with some real shit, man, listen, I don't give a fuck who you is. I am DB. The real DB. I came and made myself known because I seen the movement and I seen what was real. And it, when I don't see y'all pull up or I don't hear nothing about it or I have to do whatever I have to do or the freedom fighters down here doing what the fuck they got to do, but it ain't no random. It pissed me off. I want to see randoms. Niggas that don't, don't pull up. Pull up. Pull up. Whoop. Whop. The bam. Hey, hey, this one I'm on. Hey, let me go over here. Hey, y'all need me to do something. Hey, hey, give me a couple of flyers. Let me take them down there to where my people be at. Hey, I mean, you know what I'm saying? For real. This is how the, this the only way it matters, man. We don't got no money, so we don't mean shit to these people. We can stand out here and take the fucking top balls freeze off. Right. But if we don't got 100000 they don't want to talk to us. This is Rockford. You all, you all live here. You know how it works. Right. You know how it works. I love Leslie. I, I love him. Money. I met him when he was protesting. If he never protested, I wouldn't know the nigga. Because right. he definitely went in my circle. Because I'm definitely right. from another club. Right. But the whole thing about it is that when I see who he was, I had to acknowledge who he that's was. A fact. That's a fact. My he little brother Tony it. said, that's the next pops. That's what's up. Hey, man, let me give it to you. So every time I see you, I pull over. Bam. Love, yeah, hey, love. What, what I just pull over now, I say, hey, let me, all right, I'm running to the liquor store real fast. I got to take care of DB, man, but I'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Guess what? The South man hit, quit, and got myself back over here, man, because you know what? If, if, if this is what it takes, man. If that, somebody, that, and that, I that. might, listen, man, I, I'm an influence. I'm an influence That's in the, the game. You got man. a voice. I got, got voice. major influence. That's why I'm on the microphone. If I was a, a sucker, I wouldn't even be here, man. But you know what I'm saying? I'm a major influence, man. If you fuck with DB and fuck with what I'm saying, man, y'all need to come down here and show this nigga some love, man. You ain't even brought him a Diet Coke, man. That shit crazy, man. And these white people have this street overloaded. They would have the street overload. That's what's so crazy. Let this shit be reversed right now. White people will have this shit overloaded in Rockford. The black mayor, the white people saying that they ain't getting treated right. Oh, the white people will have this motherfucker overloaded. The black police force. What the fuck? They have a federal case going on in this motherfucker. <laughs> It'll be so deep. Am I lying, though? Right, that's because a fact. That's a fact. Fundamentally, what he's speaking about is fundamentally, when you look at the framework of how this nation was, was built, it was built by taking it. They took it. They Even, everybody, every, you, when you look at American history, everybody wants to get weepy eyed. The founding fathers knew if they didn't win, they were all getting hanged. It was all or nothing. They had to fight. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you. And I'm going to give you some game, too. How old is you? How old is you? I'm going to know. How old is you? 46 years old. You're older than me. Okay, but you ain't up until the mic. Yeah, you keep it real with the mic. You're 46 years old. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm telling you, man. We missed it. These motherfuckers right here, man. Mm hmm. They will kill us. Oh, yeah. They hope they catch me tonight. They've they not. been looking for me for a long time. But they not. They not. But when they catch me, it's it's in an awkward position. It's in an awkward space. The shit is crazy. And there's nothing they can do. Don't let them catch you. You're right. Because no, I'm you, telling you, right. I ain't going to say nothing else about what the white people do, but right. they're not feeling this. That's why I be jumping on there getting them digging on their ass. So. Right. That's what we need. That's what I we need. I am DB. I know who I am. Yeah, that's facts. The real DB. I am DB. The real DB. Up in a rock. Be safe. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry to hear that, bro. I'm sorry to hear that. This public knowledge. Right. I'm a public figure. Right. 
I'm not no regular motherfucker in Rockford. I'm a right. public fucking figure. I right. mean, damn, I done put on half of Rockford. God damn it, everybody right. know in the streets what I'm doing. I live in a fucking mansion. I'm driving a Camaro. I'm a public fucking figure. My girl just left, whatever. You want to go? Go. Be safe. Be safe out there, DB. Be safe. Be safe, be safe yeah. bro. I love you, DB. I know you do. Bro. I'm going through some shit. Bro. I know. I see it in your eyes. I can hear but it in your voice, but you riding. Up, but when I just rolled up and seen you, it was right. like, God bless me. Like, that was like my blessing. Like, like, like here it is. Like, it, like keep your faith. You know? Yeah, bro. You yeah. got to keep pushing. Like, you keep, yeah. you keep, you, you, you mad at these niggas, but keep your faith. Cause keep pushing. Good. We keep pushing. That's a fact. People, we got to keep pushing. I, I, I just want to say to you before he walks up, walks back to his car. A man is not a movement. No, so anyone that's focused just on Leslie, well, let, 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 let Leslie do it. I'm not gonna ride by. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna show no love. Or it, it, this is not take away from everybody that does, because there are a lot of people that don't say anything. They'll come up and say, "What can I do?" And they'll, they'll bring people. food. And it, absolutely, a lot of white people that say, white "What can I do to help?" Not, not, not blankets. Not. You name it. Electronics. Money. Just right, money. Right. I just want to say that, man. There's some good white, white people, people in Rockford, man. Listen, yep. man, don't take what I'm saying and, and think that all the aggression is. Some of you guys are great. Listen, Chris, if you can hear me, if you're watching this shit right now, I love you so much. I mean, he's a great guy. You know what I mean? Stop what he's doing, man. Do whatever he can do to help DB if I'm in the strand or whatever. You know what I mean? We're talking about a system. We're talking about systemic racism. That's what I just had to check a white dude over over the weekend. We talking about systemic racism, but it's not a personal relationship. Right. It's not a it's personal a relationship. We're We're, talking about a even system. with Leslie being down here, even with us being down here, it's not personal. Not, Leslie has no personal it's vendetta personal. against the mayor. He don't sit there mumbling to himself while he's sitting back in the chair. Oh, oh, back to oh, Gotta get you. It's not personal. Not it's not personal. This we are standing up against a system, systemic, systemic historic racism. This city is still is still forty to sixty years behind major cities of its size in America. Still to this day is still behind everything he just said about the education system. In what what we originally started with is exactly true. They're trying to undo. Everything that came about during the court case that Leslie was reading. This city is trying to undo the literal, literal fabric of the court case that he was just reading. I'm going to say it one more time. This city is trying to systematically undo everything that was done in the court case that Leslie was just reading. Why? Because when you undereducate a black population, you have a higher incarceration rate. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Listen, let me tell you something. My man just gave y'all the game, man, but I'm gonna give you the, I'm gonna take you to the next level, okay? Because when you undereducate, like you said, you know, it is what it is. But see, Rockford, they, they understand the game. That's the, that's what makes Rockford so crooked and dirty. See, some of these cities, they in places, they don't understand the game, so they just do shit out blatant. George Floyd, they put his neck on his face, or right in the camera, they didn't give a fuck. They understand the game. Rockford, they do, though. Rockford, they understand the game. They understand the game. So these motherfuckers is going to goddamn it always do enough to make it seem like they're doing enough. And just enough to get over. But I'm telling you, the game, I'm going to tell you, listen, man, I'm going to tell you some real shit, man. Like, <laughs> we all know it ain't enough. I mean, so I just wanted to, I wanted to step in right there. My man was saying that, right, he was giving y'all the game, but at the same time, you have to, you have to get deeper with Rafa. You have to understand Rafa. These are the, these are, listen, 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 I'm from Tennessee, and I'm going to go after I say this shit. Hey, what's going on? What it? I'm going to go after I say this shit. But let me say, let me, let me say this. Look, these motherfuckers kicking it tonight, man. They out. Yeah, they turning up tonight. They turning up. Hey, night. that's They're what I'm talking about. Out. Some real heavyweight shit, man. I'm finna get in line. I'm getting in the. I'm getting in the movement. I'm getting in the movement next. Hey, Lizzie, hold on, Melissa, but yeah, yeah, on. I don't forgot what DB wanted to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> the movement, the road by, man. Everything going on in Rock. No, but I was talking about with these niggas in Rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So, I mean, anything you say is biased. We talking okay. about the people out there. You hit your thing on the Facebook Live and see what you say, man. Do okay. you think well, white we, women, man? That's what I'm saying, man, for real. Well, okay. And then for all you black women that got a white man out there, is that nigga realer than your nigga? I mean, that be just, no, no, I, I, I want to know. I don't think, I don't think that. Uh, I want to know because I, I think these white people will be flooding the street right now if we ask them to come out here. I th- okay, I think that that, that is, that, that is, so. those, but those separate, separate, Seems a lot like of separate issues. black people because they be uh, ashamed. A lot, but there's a lot of separate issues that you convoluted okay, so into one. Oh, oh, white woman, 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 white woman, woman, white woman, 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 white woman, woman, yes, woman. My white woman, 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 white woman,
Right. She can't understand why they did black people like that. All she wants to do is make me happy. Am I wrong for taking advantage of that? Well, you don't want to never take advantage sister, of nobody. Sister, I'm asking my sisters this question. Well, I'm going to this somebody to else comment. <laughs> well, if it's somebody else question. comment, Look, I got to ask my sisters, man. Am I wrong well, for taking, so, taking so, advantage of that? I don't. I don't think right because now you're going to get a comment she's response. She's upset that they, they, they put us in bondage. Well, I think she's that you having separate great, conversations. Great, great, great you having separate conversations. You get it? You you having separate conversations. Having separate. Okay, so let's she first. bust up the Chiffero and she's upset. She want to bust up the Chiffero. Okay, so. Am, okay, I mad? That, Am I wrong? It's not about whether you being right or wrong. I just think that we need to make sure that we are not comparing any types of love or intimacy. Oh, this whether is what I'm saying black right or now. White. I'm going to say this. We're not going to be more controversial. I'm going to walk away after I say this. Uh, okay, we gonna this is what I'm saying. Okay, after this, you're going to walk away. Listen, after listen, this, you're going to walk away. Okay, okay. We're going to be around. Fuck them hoes. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, like we got to. We gotta, we gotta, like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta use the word, we gotta use the right word, we gotta use the right word, we gotta use it right, we gotta use the right word, we gotta be careful with the language. Okay, that what we not. He talking about be careful, man, and he always on here putting his hands behind his back. I would have slapped one of the police on camera. We can't slap the police. slapping them. They ain't gonna pull up tonight because they see my Camaro across the street. Let me tell you something. But we do wanna be very prepping. Some of the language, some of the language be. Okay, so I think we gonna wrap it up. I think we gonna end up wrapping this one up. All right, this is live from Occupy City Hall. Uh, yes, that is definitely too real. A hundred percent. One hundred percent. This is too real. Uh, and so later on, we will have a, a rapper reading while we can't wait. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we won't have a rapper reading. He has some black kids from his wife. All right, we're going to uh, wrap this up. I, I got to get something to eat. I got to get something to eat. So we're going to wrap this up. And, How do you think he uh, feels? Live from Occupy City Hall. Uh, we want to end this one the same way that we've ended. Uh, the, we want to end this one the same way that we. I gotta end it. I gotta end it. I gotta end it. We gonna end this one the same. Yeah, yeah. We gotta end it. We gotta end it. No, no. We gotta end it. We gonna end this one the same way that we end the rest of them. Yeah, you, we let you say it, but we gotta end it. I gotta go get something to eat. It's over. It's over. It's over. Justice for Carrie Blake. Justice for Logan Bell. Justice for Gino Washington. Justice for Mark Barmore. Uh, justice for G. Uh, Jovan Fresco, Justice for Demetrius Bennett, Justice hey. for Philip Johnson, Justice hey. for Jasper Banks, Justice hey. for Zach Babbler, uh, Justice hey. for Joseph McCormick, Justice hey, for Lil Mike Sago, Justice oh, 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 oh. Justice for uh, uh, yeah, listen, Justice for Mikey Guzman. Justice they for uh, uh, Eddie America. Patterson, Justice for Shannon Graves, and, uh, and Justice for Faustin Guaitigo. We will be back with live they, from hey. Occupy City Hall tomorrow. Uh, hey, this is going to be one of the craziest thing, episodes hey, man, that we have yet. Uh, thing, man, I feel like I'm going to have to do a whole episode he just apologizing for specific incidents that happened in this episode. But we're going to keep it all. We live. We live. We ain't deleting none of the lives. We outside. We outside. Oh, yeah.